Oh, this is terrible. You have it. <laughs> it is 5 of 46. I am Danny Bonducci. This is Casey OK. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Yeah, that reminds me of the, it's like the joke of the milk has gone bad and you smell it and you give it to someone else and say, does this smell bad? Yeah. Right. And you know it smells bad. I did it last night to Matt. We had fresh mozzarella. <laughs> really? I smelled it. I'm like, this doesn't smell good. Does this smell bad to you? He's like, yes. Like, why do you do that? What would have happened if he said no? I would continue to smell it and maybe still not trust him. Yeah, you I, wouldn't eat it. No. I, I just want the second opinion. And then I often just eat it anyway. Hey, Paul, <laughs> does this smell bad to you? Yeah, that's rancid. Okay, let's cut the green part out. So, but uh, yeah, I can see. I think we all we all do that. The yeah. hay smell thing. Uh, the thing that is uh, terrible that I want you to have is actually a thing that's terrible that I would like you to have. Uh-oh, me? Uh, yes, you. Amy and I were uh, shopping yesterday. I don't know if you can call going to the drugstore shopping. I wish going to the pharmacy was shopping. <laughs> all, uh, solve all my problems. Uh, but uh, what is the little woman spot but... Because normally if I bring in a gift at this hour, mm. it's for jelly bean. Yeah. It has something to do with yeah. the unicorn. These do not have uh, anything with a unicorn unless you want to tape one like a horse's head. And that's just, I think, rude. You can't do it. These are Brock's candy corn. <gasps> oh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're out already? Yeah, and they're witch's teeth. It says so right on the no thing. No way. So why don't you take them right there for a second? Grab them. Oh, yeah. Take, take a look at that. Yeah, Paul's got them. Wow. Those are cool. Those, they're super cool. Right now, I didn't have the exact same thing because I wanted to experiment, see what I was giving you. And, uh, <gasps> Whoa, that's so cool. It is, huh? But in my estimation, they're awful. They're not... Because they're going to taste like candy corn. No. Oh. No, I bought something. Now, they're not the exact same thing. Mine weren't Brock's. But mine kind of crumbled into dust Oh. When, when you ate them. By the way, that crackling you're hearing, not a totally cool sound effect. It's actually you're trying to rip over. <laughs> that's that's what you, When you're telling a story on your radio, and hey, get ready to crinkle it again. You know, right, sir? Ready? Yes. So, Paul, I'm sitting out by the campfire. Yeah. And we're it's burning, it's starting to burn up. That's, that's a moment in radio right oh. there, the campfire story with cellophane. We've got to keep that bag around yeah, just for those it, moments. Absolutely. So, uh, uh, whatever I bought, which is candy corn something, uh, maybe Sour Patch, I don't know, but they're really gross and horrible. Now, I, I, no normal person loves candy corn. That's you. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you know, he said no normal No person, normal man. people. You, do, you don't need to qualify yeah, yeah, anymore. Yeah, save me. Um... But anyway, so I think they're awful. Are they awful? They almost taste like apple flavored. Right. Oh, that would make so sense. The would green, be... green apple? Yeah. And I wonder if I'm... it's psychological because it's green. Well, remember, you think Fruit Loops all taste different. This is true. <laughs> and they don't. So no. you might think those all taste apple because they're green. I don't know. But green uh, apple is like one of my favorite for uh, Jolly Ranchers. Yeah. That's one of my favorites. Uh, is there a Starburst that's an apple? What else is apple? Uh, Whatever. Think... Apple Jacks are apple. <laughs> I like apple jacks apples better apple. than apple apples. Actual apples. <laughs> Me too. Apples are good. Those Granny sure. Smiths and those something crisp. Mm, honey crisp, yeah. Honey crisp and young and delicious. I'm I like sure these, thank you. I'm pretty sure they're not called young and delicious. Well, why, do you <laughs> no. put, why do you hand me these notes that say young and delicious? This is weird and probably bad. Yeah, definitely so, bad. What? I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, the witch's teeth have been passed back. Crazy, and if they taste like apple. All right, I guess so if I know they taste like apple. Oh, there's definitely an apple taste okay. to it. Yeah. All right, now, would you have, tell me one? Like please. a caramel apple. All right. See Good that, catch, man? man? The left hand Those under reflexes. the table. Like ninja. That's why I could fight a puma. Oh, definitely caramel apple. Now I'm tasting it fully. All right, now I feel better. Thank you. That was nice of you to bring in for me. Yeah, you're very uh, lucky. I mean, you're very sweet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very nice. Something good. Very fortunate Something to have been out. my friend. Uh, so, I may hate my wife. Yeah, I don't. Maybe. What did she do to you? She didn't buy me a bag of candy. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah, she did. <laughs> yeah, I got those other did. things, and they were terrible. All right, so here's, uh, uh, you know that Amy and I, we play a lot of games, mostly backgammon, but right. often when we're done with backgammon, we then play two, two, two games of gin. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we did that yesterday, and uh, I think it was the second game, because what we do, no, we might even play three games, because... One is when you win, you're the queen of the game that matters. This is the things we say to each other. And that's just for backgammon? That's only backgammon. Then whoever wins the second one is the queen of the game nobody cares about. So that's <laughs> what we say to each other because we're butts. But we care equally about winning or losing. And so, if you win anything else, if, if I recall correctly, you're the queen of all games. Queen of all games. If you win both sets. Yeah, oh, okay. You're queen yeah, of okay, all games. All right. And 
I'm also, I think I'm queen of the skies right now because I won on an airplane last. Oh, we're, that's cool. Oh, we're queens of my room. We, we do whatever we can do to hold something up over the other guy. But the queen of the game that matters and the queen of the game nobody cares about are two things we actually care about. So we're playing. And, and gin, here's what you do on gin. You take a card from either pile. You put it into your stack of cards. You fan them out so you can look what you got. Then you put one down. Mm -hmm. So I put one down. And she's about to, to move for the deck of cards to pull her card. And she hasn't yet. When I yell, wait. So she does, because she's my wife. You yeah. don't know there could be a snake on her. How do you know? <laughs> I said, wait. And she said, what? And I point down to the nine of spades that I discarded. And I said, that's not the card I meant to discard. Yeah, well, that's too bad. That's what she said. <laughs> like, literally. And, and I think also added, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. And they said, wait, let me explain. It's not like I realized, oh, I shouldn't discard the nine of spades. I reached for the four of hearts, and these are specific because I remember. Yeah. The four of hearts to discard that. And as I reached for it and then talked to you about something, I grabbed the card next to it. So I literally didn't mean to discard that. Right. And she goes, you lose. And threw all her cards down. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> That's what I said. And some other words. And now I have lost on technicalities before. I've had too many cards when I've said gin. I've had not had enough cards when I've said gin. And this is the big one that I do. One out of every 20 games. I don't actually have gin when I say gin. <laughs> yeah. I look and one's a diamond and they're not all hearts. Whatever the hell it is. Right. I often, one out of 20, I would say maybe one out of 15. I go, Jen, she says, that's not Jen, and I leave the table. <laughs> so I thought, so I asked her a little bit. I said, you wouldn't let me just pick up that card and continue to play? Like, if we picked up two cards accidentally from the deck, we just put one back in the middle of the deck or discard it. Sure, yeah. You know, I should be able to pick up that card. And she said, no, you're cheating. <laughs> and I, I, you know, I got, kind of, I got kind of mad. I mean, I'm more than willing to cheat, because I, I think that cheating... When I do it, is adorable. When she does it, she's cheating. Totally <laughs> different thing. So uh, anyway, she. I just thought that was kind of weird. That we she play would... gin all the time, so I totally know what you're going through. Yeah. But the way I see it, um, if you still have your hand out, yes, and, and you're, you're maybe touching the card, yeah, or and you put it down and it's face up and you some spades or whatever, and then you're like, oh, oh, wrong one. But she, like, you had put it down and she had already reached to go. It's like a matter of seconds that matter. Well, I, I see what you're going for, and that was kind of my argument about what happened when, and that's when she went to Google. <laughs> oh. Oh, there's Google. an official rule yeah, on it. Yeah, there is. Oh, Google I bet. is an official cheater. And she's right. <laughs> yeah. If yeah. you just, no matter what discard card you discard, it's now it's the gone, property yeah. of the deck. But yeah. you're she's also cheating right. by- well, when not you said, cheating. No, by picking up two cards by accident, and then you take another one and put it elsewhere in the deck, that's cheating. What no. would you want to do with it? You got to leave it where it is because that's what the shuffle gave you. Oh, but everybody knows what everybody the next card is. It doesn't is. matter. You've now, you've now altered the entire deck. Yeah, I thought about that when I was saying it, but that is, in fact, what we do. So yeah. I, I thought it doesn't sound normal. What if you're waiting on, say, uh, by the way, last time, all actual cards I needed or discarded. This one, I'm making up a card. So <laughs> what if uh, uh, you're, you're, you need the seven of spades? You put the seven of spades, back, it's still in the deck. Yeah, but you're now getting... The next, the card after that wasn't supposed to be yours, and the card after that wasn't. So you've altered the entire deck up until that seven coming up. Do you again. think the cosmic gods are sitting on your deck of cards? You have altered the rhythm yes. pattern. <laughs> but now everybody, when you come out of this game, is going to have a third eyeball. You've yeah. torn the fabric of the space-time continuum. Continuum yep. with a thing of gin. By saying gin when there wasn't gin, I want some gin. <laughs> News is brought to you by Les Schwab. Another mutilated cat has been discovered in Thurston County, this time near Lacey, bringing the count of dead cats to 13. Jeez. The latest cat was discovered yesterday afternoon near Salmon Lake Road, and the homeowner told investigators that they were not aware of the string of cat mutilations until they spotted this dead animal. They initially assumed it had been killed by another animal, you know, a coyote or a bear or something. They then notified uh, their neighbors who said, this is a string. This is a, a, 
a terrible uh, occurrence throughout Thurston County. I'm not sure I would fully trust anybody that didn't know anything about these cab mutilations and lived in Seattle area. Yeah, especially somebody who lives right in the area yeah. where this How, is happening. You know what? Even if you don't own a TV, if there's a, you have neighbors, it's happening there. There's something, in my opinion, there's something odd about not knowing that this is happening right around you. I yeah. agree with you. And I went out with a group of girlfriends on Monday. Uh, we went to Rooftop Brewing. We're hanging out, having a good time. Some cat wanders by and we start talking about it. And one of my girlfriends was like, what are you guys talking about? Where do you live? Under a rock? Like, <laughs> yeah. How do you not know about this? So I'm with you, Danny. I thought We're, it was really weird. Super odd. Yet, I'm not surprised that one of your friends doesn't know. She works in the media industry. <laughs> Well, so I, I think know. I know who you're talking about, and I think she's surprised to go, oh, I put on pants this morning. That's weird. <laughs> That's what I think. The other strange thing in this instance, besides mutilation, mutilation of the cat, yeah, uh, this was a secluded area down like a private road. Yep. It wasn't, you know, the others have been found in more populated areas. How do you find a cat down a, a desolate road? They run away. This, something's weird about this. Yeah. Well, and I, I know, especially in the summertime, I like to run outside. And around areas of Belltown, Queen Anne, you do see cats periodically. Mm -hmm. And they'll come up to get pets. You're like, hey, kitty, kitty. Like, I'm sure, Danny, you see them around Queen Anne. I do, but I would say three out of four run away. And one comes up and lets me pet it and play with it. Right. But maybe that's why they're remote areas, because they think the cats are going to be friendly and come up to them. I don't well, know. No, I believe the others have all been found in, in much more populated areas. And I, I think the, the police theory on this is that the cats are being taken and dropped off to right. where they're actually found. Now, there's another thing they're saying. They're saying it's not one guy anymore. I thought that could be the case. There could be copycats, no pun intended. Oh, yeah. But um, they said seven of them have been killed in a very similar fashion. That right. They believe those are all the same person. Right, but there's 13 of them now. 13 total, and they don't know. They could be the same person. They could be seven or to one person, and then five or six or yep. to another. Who knows? Who knows? But it's still scary. For, you know, there's probably not the nicest of uh, young men, and I'm, my money's on young men. My money's on, just because I enjoy this, I'm sorry there's dead cats, but my money's on... 35 year old now you got to give me an umbrella on this when sure. i say 37 i mean a certain area 35 certain area 30s uh 35 year old white dude for sure mm -hmm. that's that's who's mutilating cats yeah. i've had yeah. enough of uh, millennial white dudes <laughs> that right now a five-year-old boy has been hospitalized after being hit by a car on state route two on, on this trestle there this happened late last night, just about 10 o'clock at night, at the end of the trestle near State Route 204. The driver that hit the boy pulled over, called 911, and now, of course, troopers and investigators trying to figure out what the heck was a five-year-old boy doing at 10 o'clock on the trestle. 10 o'clock at night? 10 o'clock at night. Wow. And yeah, what was it? Five-year-old? Five years old. That's too young. They were able to locate the boy's mother, but uh, this is an ongoing investigation, of course, trying to figure out. Everything cool with the driver of the car? He pulled over? He wasn't drunk? Nope. It certainly wasn't the driver's fault. The kid shouldn't have been there. Sometimes you get uh, punished even if it's not your fault. Uh, there was a kid riding on his bicycle, dove straight out of the street car, ran him, ran him over and killed him. Police said that day, right there almost on the spot, there was nothing that could have been done. We're so sorry to the parents. Unfortunately, the parents were John Gotti. And John Gotti didn't like living next door to the guy who killed his kid, innocent or not, and hacked him up into little pieces and buried him in bags in the desert. So still pay attention to angry parents for a nice little John Gotti story. Check in with us later. <laughs> <laughs> the mine that was discovered floating in Puget Sound the, earlier this week uh, caused, or was that Friday? I think it was last Friday. I, I misunderstood you. What am I? That's a mime. mime. Oh, I'm a mime. a mime. I can't believe I'm not good at that. You got it in one stroke. That, that was a mime swimming, if I'm not mistaken. Well, if I do floating, I'm just a dead thing. <laughs> but it was actually kind of a terrible mime because you started with, tell me what I am. What am I? Look at me. I so don't think you can say any of I that. I not only have to be a mime among my many <laughs> other talents, I have to be a good mime. Well, you said that you were a good mime. I, I'm just pointing then out. Then I said, what am I? <laughs> Well, the mine that was discovered floating in Puget Sound captured so much uh, focus in our area and across the world uh, trying yeah. to figure out, oh my gosh, where did this mine come from? What was it? Was it, most people assumed, experts assumed, leftover from World War II okay. because it was covered with so much sea debris, you know, all sorts of different seaweed and barnacles and this, that, and the other. 
Well, they have now determined. Oh, good. I want to know. It's from an exercise conducted at Naval Undersea Warfare Command Keyport back in 2005. Wow. But it's a new mine. It's a mine that they had used during this uh, activity 13 years ago. I would assume that those are new mines. I don't know what they used during yeah, those activities. I, I don't know either because it wasn't even a mine necessarily by uh, Webster's definition. It wasn't really even a mine, right? Well, it was an inert mine. It's still called a mine, but it's inert. Right, but it's only inert if the explosives in it don't explode. Then it's not a mine if there were never any explosives. It's a floaty thing. According to like the Public mine. Affairs right. Department, they already made it go boom. For the Navy, this was they call this an inert mine that is placed between Brownsville Keyport and Bainbridge Island. The question now is, why didn't they retrieve all of the mines they yeah, put out there? That is certainly the question. Because they said not all training mines were recovered. So why not? Somebody's just bad at counting. <laughs> it's like, like a panic. We probably got them all. <laughs> And a terrible poli- a terrible car crash in Pennsylvania is now being called a homicide now that they've gotten to the bottom of what happened. According to troopers, John Jenkins has admitted to cutting the brake lines of his girlfriend's car. He is 39 years old. I cannot believe that works. Yeah. It's, that it really, that your car, you know, that... You wouldn't know, hey, these, something's different about my brakes. I'm going to pull over. That you'd get to whatever dangerous part of the world, your fiance, boyfriend, girlfriend, James Bond, uh, Goldfinger, whoever wanted you to crash and die. And just at the right moment, you go to put on the brakes. I don't have any brakes. I'm going to die for sure. Yeah. This is an amazing thing, this actually. It didn't work for me. Remember, I told you. But you, you did it after the accident. I, well, I didn't actually do it because I couldn't find a <laughs> well, brake. You line. tried it after the accident. I did. Yeah, Danny, you were just talking about this, saying that you looked under the car, could not figure out where to cut the brake lines. Well, this guy did, and initially he's claiming the reason he did so is because he needed something um, to smoke his crack with. Sure. So and he, he was going to use the brake lines? So this answers yep. yesterday's question, does anybody still smoke crack? That's right. <laughs> the answer is yeah, and you need your girlfriend's stuff to do it. Now, his friends don't buy it. They say, I'm pretty sure if you're a career crackhead, you can find something else besides a brake line to smoke your crack with. Are you saying you're just smoking the brake line? He cut the brake line to use it as a pipe. No, that won't work. Well, that's I mean, is, what there, he is was it rubber? Claiming. Is there? Is there? Is it metal? You need at least. Oh, metal. there'll be parts of it that's metal. Yeah, metal so. All right, but that's way hard. A coke can will do. Anything will do in a pinch. Once foil. you take yeah. one hit of crack out of the right pipe, and then that breaks, you'll do anything to take the <laughs> second hit. Well, he is now facing homicide charges because when the brake lines went out, she crashed and did not survive. Amazing! I can't believe that. Danny, did you face any charges when you uh, when that accident where you tried to cut the brake lines of, after? Of what failing Were you to arrested? cut your brake lines? No, I mean I for the I accident arrested. itself. I don't know if I was arrested or not, to be honest, because it's been a few times. But but that was no, the panic. That's why you were trying to cut the brake no, lines. No, the panic that I had crashed. Um, yeah, I don't know why I was quite as afraid. I was really young because it was my Datsun. It means I was still in high school, oh. and I was a little more afraid of things than I am now, having been through the system oh a couple of times. <laughs> If you want to win that trip to Vegas, just text that word right now to 200-200 for your chance to win. A lot of you have been duped by somebody selling something. You, know, you were duped into thinking it was real. Speakers. Speakers for you. <laughs> yeah. I was duped once buying concert tickets. They turned out to be fake. Oh, I th- I've had that happen to me as well. I think a sporting event, though. Mm-hmm. I bought a macadamia nut that I was positive was crack. <laughs> That's, you'd be surprised how much that looks right, even a little powdery outside. Yeah. I was happy to hand over my 20. Well, this scam is pretty bizarre. Police are searching for a man who allegedly tricked three men into purchasing counterfeit gold dust to the tune of $306,000. Jeez. Now, they know who he is, but they are searching for him. They've gone through security footage. Uh, this took place at an extended stay America hotel. And this Those are guy, great, by the way. Are they? Yeah. I mean, if you don't want to do, like, I kind of got a rule about how much I will spend, and sometimes I've had to break it because of 
peak times and parts of the year yeah. or the only hotel in the area was something really, really expensive. But you could stay there for a week at $175 a night. That's a bargain And they have a kitchen, a sink, and a microwave. Yeah. Well, is that where you would go to buy your gold dust? No, I most well, certainly <laughs> would not. <laughs> So this guy sells counterfeit gold to the three men at this hotel. Now, the men, of course, think it's real. They met up and tested a small amount of the gold dust. They said, all right, this is real. Here's the money. They transferred it into the bank account. He then gave them a locked safe and said, all the gold dust is in here. And as soon as you give me the rest of the money, I'll give you the combination. So he shows them the gold inside, closes it, turns the dial, and then he leaves, goes and checks his bank. The rest of the money gets put in. That's when they call him back and say, well, where's the safe uh, combo? He doesn't pick up, doesn't call them back. They go to the police, open up the safe. It's all fake. So how'd they pass the test? A small amount was real, and then everything else in the safe total fake gold and the dude got away with three hundred six thousand dollars. wow uh you know because i would be so ruined if something like that happened to me i'm not in any way happy for that guy but nobody got hurt and those guys are stupid and ask him trouble you're no you're meeting in a hotel room because you're doing something dicey right you're not paying taxes whatever it is none of that was completely above board and the whole locked safe thing like you knew things were fishy things were weird (laughs) right then Things have really escalated on airplanes. I feel like it's four times a week we hear about something peculiar happening on an airplane. Yeah. This time around, uh, it's an airline in the United Kingdom where I feel like a lot of them happen because they have so many discount airlines going to Ibiza. That's where this plane was going. So people are partying. This woman was super excited was able to do cartwheels on the airplane and then took her shirt off and started giving lap dances. Nice. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't think Amy would be thrilled, but, and to be honest with you, I wouldn't be thrilled because I think it's weird that you think you can take such liberties, sit on my lap and grind. I don't know yeah. you, but, but I'm you not wouldn't be 20 thrilled. Bucks, go away. You wouldn't be thrilled after it happened. Like, you'd let it happen and then go, no, oh, that no, was No, I most certainly would not. Oh, okay. I would not. Remember, Sarah, when we used to go to the nudie oh, bars? So I used to wear a giant belt buckle with really sharp edges so nobody oh, yeah. would sit on me. <laughs> and then they would anyway sometimes. And I'd say, nope, not hip. They don't love that. Thank you. Bye. Here's yeah. 20 bucks. For some reason, they thought it was okay to touch us. Like, they thought it was okay because I was... Oh, right. I had the same parts as them that they could touch yeah. my parts. I'm like, no. That's not okay? No. No. <laughs> They touched Amy's parts, and I, she started to be a party pooper about it. <laughs> and I said, can you just let them touch you so I can watch you? <laughs> she sat there with her big boobs. They were touching each Oh, man, it was a good time. <laughs> well, as you can imagine, this woman who was giving lap dances got into a wee bit of trouble. They escorted her off the plane because <laughs> they just put on a, uh, just get out. a parachute, strapped it on there. Never it is mind. a visa. I guess you need a strap on to jump out of a plane, Sarah. <laughs> Michigan, Coloma High School. A bunch of former students from the 80s got together, uh, reunited to uncover the time capsule they buried 30 years ago. A bunch of them all gathered around, as often happens, a TV crew, like in a small town, right, show sure. up. Well, they had their shovels, they had the location, they started digging. They said, oh, I can't wait to open it up and look at the Michael Jackson cassette and all the other stuff we put in there. They start digging. There's no time capsule. Like, oh, it must be over here on the left. They dug up the entire yard. There's no time capsule. What happened to the time capsule? They can't remember exactly where they put it. Well, like that's which why house you draw even, a apparently. map. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, what? Like even which house, apparently. It's like, at yeah. the school. Yeah. It's at the school. It's at the school. Well, yeah. maybe. They, it's not right. so far. I, I mean, we have all we all have very different backgrounds growing up. My high school, where they could have buried one, probably covers two miles. So if you didn't put a real big X marks the right. spot sure. on a map, which they didn't, they said, well, what do you want? This was our English class. We didn't know how to measure. So now they're going to have to call in metal detector you know, prize hunter. What do you call those people? Weirdos. But why did they <laughs> did they put in money? No 
but they want their time capsule. Who and they're cares? It's a Michael Jackson. Case. You should have right. gone to my high school. We actually <laughs> buried Michael Jackson. <laughs> when you go on a first date, things can be a little awkward. Yeah, they can. Yeah, you know, sometimes things don't go swimmingly. In the case of one person, um, he had a heart attack. Oh, yeah. First date. His date turned out to be a doctor and saved his life. That's a beautiful story. Now, this was all caught on camera because they were outside. They were walking on the beach and somebody happened to be out there filming birds and surf and everything. And this dude just drops down. Then the date drops down, gives him mouth to mouth and turns out... They are still together, and they said to the guy filming, thank you for filming our first kiss. Still together from that point to when? How long to now, that this happened a couple of months ago, and he is just now totally okay. His heart stopped for 17 minutes. Wow. Oh, they'll do something significant out of the number 17. Yeah. And stuff like that. They'll play this song a lot. It's cute, uh, This right? is one of the main reasons I don't surf, aside from the fact that I think it might be stupid, is... Uh, <laughs> I, I saw a story on these guys, and the the video that they show yeah. is they're coming out of the ocean with the big surfboards, yeah. not the uh, I can surf, so I'll use the small surfboard. The I don't really know how to surf that well, so I'll use a canoe surfboard. <laughs> and he goes walking up the beach, and as he's leaning over to plant it so it'll stand up on his own, he just goes face forward into the sand. Face forward. It had to hurt. Yeah. And I guess she thinks he's kidding for a split second and then goes and revives him. Yep. Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. On to New Zealand. One town in New Zealand wants to put a ban on cats. A ban on cats? Why? I love cats. I love cats. They said that there's cats right now that um, are multiplying and that they are taking down insects and reptiles and they're eating too much. So, Danny, you, when you travel, you do see a lot of I go out of my keys. way to find the cats because yeah. there's almost all places ha- are, have the famous cat thing of Rome, of Mexico. Yeah. Of There's the uh, graveyard cats. In Paris, and I go. I mm-hmm. want to go and see all the crazy cats. And I bring food with me. Well, I guess the problem in New Zealand is they're eating what's ever in nature because nobody's putting out little bits of cat food. So now they think they need to ban cats and it's going to be mandatory to microchip and neuter. Because your your, your house, cat. house cat. But I'm assuming there's a bunch of feral cats running around, and that's why there's too many. So what would they do about them? They didn't say, but I think we all know what they might start doing. No. Well, you put out poison food. Uh, oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> I wouldn't have done that. No, I wouldn't have done not even think of that. No, and a lot but of yeah, places... yeah, now that I think about it, you've said it. I guess it's right. A lot of places capture them. You know, they neuter them, and then they clip their ears sure, so yeah. they don't keep capturing the same cats over and over. So I'm hoping that's what they do. Yeah, for yeah, yeah, yeah. The poison thing, though, sounds oh. like it would work, but it's kind of a drag for kitty manitties. Yeah. It's time for today's Things Are Not Right in Florida. Story of the day. Yay. Yay. What the hell happened there? <laughs> <laughs> a Florida man is in jail after doing something at his ex-girlfriend's house he wasn't supposed to. This woman arrived home and noticed the window with the air conditioning unit was missing the air conditioning unit. The screen was torn, and she realized there must have been somebody breaking into my house. She still goes into her house, which is like the bad movie, you know? Don't Don't go go in there. Well, she does walk inside, and she sees a hat on the floor. She recognizes that chapeau as belonging to her ex, Pierre Couvin. Where is this happening? Florida. (laughs) And he's got a chapeau, and his name's... (laughs) (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Well, (laughs) ha, ha, ha. Was in the bedroom. This is the French section of, of Florida, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> With chapeau. She opens the door, and there he is in her closet, completely naked, praying. Wow. That's a little extreme. <laughs> Although calls, I've gone really far to get girls back. Yeah. And please come back to me. I love you. I'll never do anything. Blah, 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 blah. And then while you're doing that, you're trying to check the horizons for girls over here because you don't want to be single a whole day <laughs> if you're me. Uh, and praying in the closet naked? I've spent a fair amount of time in my own closet naked, but I don't know if I was praying. <laughs> for I was. sure. Well, <laughs> has been arrested. <laughs> <laughs> for what? Um, burglary. He broke into his ex-girlfriend's house. Broke in through the window. Through the bathroom window. I know that's With song. the air conditioner. But uh, I don't know. He's been invited before. I'll bet they don't really have a case. Nobody got hurt. Nothing was broken. 
Well, just because you invited somebody to yeah, your house before mean, means they could break in the next time? You can't come back uninvited. <laughs> no. I'm not positive of that, having been through some of these. Remember, I tried yeah. to get tenants out of my house. They broke in. It's a civil matter because I invited them in to look at but the house before there. that. No, not in the beginning. Oh, so they weren't tenants. Uh, well, they were not <laughs> tenants when I showed them because they never paid me any money. I yeah. showed them that was the end of that and I never heard from them again. Went back to that house and there's a family living in my house. And no, the cops got, I called the cops immediately and they said, civil matter, dude. You well, not in this in. case. Burglary is what he is behind bars for, still in jail because he cannot post bond. Oh, Florida. She oh, Florida. Florida. Oh, Florida. News is brought to you by Les Schwab. We have so much fun stuff happening on the show today, including at 7.50. If you can tell us where Sarah's Beaver's been, you can win VIP passes to check out The Predator. The Predator. Predator. Or it's even in theaters September 14th. I ain't got time to bleed. KZOK.com, Facebook.com slash Sarah's Beaver for pictures and be ready to call at 7.50. We do have music news right around the corner. A new place is opening up for fans of David Bowie. This place looks super cool. I'll tell you all about it. There's a new song from Steven Tyler, that one where he uh, covers the Rolling Stones. Right, sure. We've got it. Neat. We will play that for you next. We'll talk about the Seahawks game last night and give you guys a chance to win Mariners tickets next in sports. Starting with some music news, a new cocktail bar has opened up in the West End of London. It is David Bowie themed. It's opening at the Hotel Cafe Royal and it is named Ziggy's. It'll feature libations all inspired by David Bowie, including Tigers of Vaseline, which is a modern take on the Pina Colada and cites a lyric from Hang On To Yourself. There's also the darkness and the disgrace which is a line from Lady Stardust. Now, some people are wondering why the Hotel Cafe Royal? What does that have to do with any of this? It's where David Bowie chose to retire Ziggy Stardust, the character, in 1973 with a star-studded Last Supper, which included uh, people like Lou Reed and Mick Jagger. Wow, attending. that's interesting. So, now, did they have to acquire the, the rights from people? Not that I know of, because it's named Ziggy's, and it's just lyrics from songs. Hmm, it's neat. not. I would drink in a David Bowie themed bar. Yeah, yeah I think that'd be a fun cool. thing. Pretty neat. I didn't. It's funny when you say uh, uh, tigers and Vaseline. Oh, that's right. That is what he says. That's a weird thing. <laughs> and it's, it comes out from uh, putting out fires with gasoline. Rubbing my tigers, the Vaseline. That sounds right. It does sound right. <laughs> it also sounds wrong at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a line before that about to hold on to yourself. I think that, well, you know what Bowie was up to. Are we getting this right, Tori? Um, sure, yeah. Close? <laughs> Close enough? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Aerosmith. Huh. Well said, though, really, as the <laughs> rock and roll expert. Aerosmith singer Steven Tyler and extreme guitarist, the handsome Nuno Betancourt, have teamed up and recorded a version of the Rolling Stones classic, Brown Sugar. This is a track that comes from Muscle Shoals, Muscle Shoals Small Town Big Sound, which is a tribute to the studio. It's coming out on September 28th. Would you like to hear Steven Tyler and Nuno Betancourt doing the Stones? Yeah, sure I would. Right, sounds like this. It's very bluesy. All right. Uh, I was just about to say I love it. And then he went too far. Did some weird yeah, kind of breaking <laughs> voice. You know, you don't need to top Big Jagger. Just sing the song, man. But I like it. I think he's doing a great job. But I, but I really like his voice. Yeah, me too. But, Although your impression right there sounded like you were trying to be Steven Tyler throwing up. And it was spot on. You ever seen Steven Tyler <laughs> throwing up? You'd know. <laughs> Hey, some of the biggest names in music will be taking the stage for the iHeartRadio Music Festival, September 21st and 22nd. And we want to send you to Las Vegas to see the show on us. You are listening for the new keyword. You texted 200-200 for your chance to win a trip for two. Your next chance to text in and win happens at 810 this morning. Now, so many different people are going to be at this music festival. And one of the things everybody talks about is the collaborations. Yeah. Right. 
You know, like we were just talking about Steven Tyler and Nuno Betancourt, kind of a weird pairing. You just never know with this iHeartRadio Music Festival who's going to pair up. It's going to be pretty phenomenal. In entertainment news, a man from Connecticut who hacked into more than 200 iCloud accounts of Hollywood stars has just been sentenced to eight months in prison. Not bad. That's real time. What What did he get? Uh, as in what pictures. photos or yeah, it was pictures? Those are or money that he sold things for. These are the photos. Um, the most one you probably will remember the most was Jennifer Lawrence. It's the one I was thinking about, to be honest with you, yeah. Private photos. It was also Kirsten Dunst, Kate Upton, and many others that he would steal and then put out there. I don't know that this dude made any money from it. Yeah, the two big things, it wasn't like he was hacking into bank accounts, but it, it was photos and it was um, contact lists. So I could get somebody's you know phone contact All list right. and then I'd have so phone numbers. But he didn't blackmail anybody or anything like that? He's not getting not charged that I'm for aware that? Of, yeah. Not okay. that I'm aware of. Boy, it's Jennifer Anderson, uh, not Jennifer Anderson, Jennifer Lawrence. Why didn't she just say, oh, no, that's not me. That's somebody's naked body. My hell, that's certainly my face. Just act all cash, but uh, hold it up, show it around, whatever. Nope, nope. I'm way thinner there, but I've got a little, ca- <laughs> a couple extra pounds right there. This girl's skinny. And put it down, and that's that in today's day and age. It's tough Show me that's really her body. Half of them were fake. There were a whole bunch floating around the internet that were filthy, that were not her. But it was like... She's been naked on camera so many times. We've all seen her naked. So what's the difference? Who owns it? Who said okay? Yeah. yeah. No, but I'm saying the like, why deny it? If the girl doesn't say okay, it's a huge difference. Yeah. No, I'm not that. saying this dude didn't do something terrible. I'm saying why even deny it? You know, it's me. It should never have happened, but I don't think she felt the need to say it wasn't her. Uh, again, no, she didn't. She said that was me and yeah. got all mad. I'm saying rather than get all crazed about it, just deny it's you. And in today's, you know, how you do with technology and photos and things like that, it can make people look like dogs with little shiny noses. Why would you ever cop to anything embarrassing being you? Jimmy Fallon is paying it forward. The Tonight Show host was having dinner with his wife, Nancy, at a restaurant in the Hamptons when he decided to pay for a stranger's dinner bill. He said that the group of four were really having a nice dinner. They were super chill. Who's, got, who's the group of four, him or the people he's paying for? A bunch of random people. Four people having dinner. He said they really appeared to be having a nice time. They just had a good vibe, and he decided he wanted to pay for their dinner and did. It was more than $1,000. Yeah, don't care. As a matter of fact, I like him just a little bit less. Yeah. <laughs> well, where's he buying dinners for folks? At a place where those... In the Hamptons. Right, place Only where rich white people could... get to go there. Let's, I know what we should do. Let's buy them stuff. Yeah. No, how about, you? how much is your dinner? And they say $1,000. Awesome. And you go out the door and you give that to Wounded Warriors. And don't buy rich white people their... Ooh, I almost said the F word. Dinner. I'm not buying it, Jimmy. <laughs> it's hard to believe it's been 25 years since we first met Mulder and Scully. Yeah. But it is... And the series returned this year and now appears to have come to another close. But they are coming out with Mulder and Scully Barbie dolls. Now, this is from... I'm shocked that they didn't already have this. Yeah, they look really good. No, I'm shocked that they're getting it, to be honest. Really? Yeah. The um, I guess action figures... Barbie dolls are really incredibly well-controlled. They're not bobbleheads, although bobbleheads are fairly well-controlled. People's likeness and things like that. You know, he spent a lot of time. He cheated on his wife. Everybody knows it. He went to sex rehab. Everybody knows it. Continued to have sex when he got out. Everybody knows it. I don't know if he's going to be my new Ken for my seven-year-old. I guess if it's that specific brand Barbie, then, I, then well, I'm not shocked. She said they're getting yeah. Barbie dolls. Yeah, I just, thought, I just took that as... Like you know, dolls, action figure type dolls. Who? Yeah. Right. Well, that might be different then. Mattel says it is official X Files Barbies. Yeah. And they look just like them from the day. Oh, so they should pose them in time. one box having sex. <laughs> <laughs> Bad news for Heather Locklear. She was hit with three new charges stemming from her arrest when she allegedly attacked a cop and an EMT. Now, you remember, she was arrested twice, but this last time, back in June, EMTs and cops responded to her home. She was heavily intoxicated, allegedly punched a cop and an EMT when they tried to load her onto the gurney. She was never charged until now. Yesterday, she was hit with a misdemeanor count of interfering with law enforcement and two counts of misdemeanor battery for attacking the first offender. So, uh, I bo- the first offender? 
Uh, first, sorry, first responder. Okay, so it's kind of nothing, but I guess they got madder at her than they thought they were to bring these charges now. I've never even heard of some, something like that. But she must have said something in an interview. Who knows? Because this kind of time going by between the, you know getting punched in the face and saying, you know what, I think I'll file charges. It's something you would think you'd file charges about pretty quickly. Yeah. I think they're waiting for her to get out of rehab because it would be easier to file charges against somebody who's not in um, rehab. You know, okay. to go go and arrest them when they're getting treatment, you probably wait till they're done with treatment. You would definitely wait till they're done, but they're usually going to treatment to dodge you. Yeah. She was also arrested for felony domestic violence, so she's she's got her docket full. Yeah, no plus. No pun intended. Uh, she's really embarrassed. She's got a famous face you can't oh, yeah. deny. You yeah. know, a lot of people, they get drawn up in the scandal and the the uh, uh, city council, or not city council, like a teacher strike, and there's pictures of one teacher with a move to another town. Nobody ever heard from you again. It's <laughs> nothing. But, you know, Heather Locklear punched some guy, punched some cops. That's, that's trouble, and she's going to be, you know, the scourge of Calabasas. Uh, coming up uh, just after 9 o'clock, Derek is going to tell us all of the new movies and theaters, what the reviewers have to say, what we should see, what we shouldn't see. And Derek is also about to tell you how you can win free movie tickets. That's right. KZOK has teamed up with Adam Tickets for Free Movie Friday. Free, free movie, movie Friday. Friday. The Adam Tickets app lets you browse movie titles, buy tickets, invite friends, pre-order concessions all from your phone, and skip the lines. Today, Adam Tickets wants to give you a chance at free movie tickets Text them now. Text WIND, that's W-I-N-D, to ADAM1, that's 28661, for your chance to win. Standard data and text message rates may apply. Thank you very much. Let's take a look at sports. Sports. Sports brought to you by Bradley Johnson Attorneys. If you're facing a DUI, call 1-800-DUI-OA, 1-800-DUI-OA. Wade LeBlanc was pitching for the Mariners, got a big win over the Athletics, 7-1. to one. Now, you remember the last time we played the Athletics, Big Maple got hit uh, by a batter. Yeah, in the elbow. Happened again out. last night. Same dude. Hits Wade LeBlanc. He managed to deflect the ball, thankfully not get hurt. He was laughing like he made the play, got the out at first. But I'm thinking, really? Are they trying to kill us? <laughs> yeah, it sounds so, like that guy is. The pitcher yeah. made the play at first. He got hit by a, a, a hit. line drive and then made the play. And then managed to throw it over to first to get the out. Nice. Big, big win over the Athletics. We are battling for wild card against Oakland. So this is a four-game series. Very, very important. Derek, what are the standings right now? Uh, We are currently only, uh, I believe, now six and a half games back. Uh, First, uh, but what? For the wild card. For wild card, we're six and a half? I I, thought we were four and a half. I don't know, but we trail uh, both Oakland and the Yankees for wild card. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. I heard this morning. Oh, uh, no, it is five and a half. Five and a half. Okay, yeah. so this is a huge series against Oakland. If we can keep winning, we edge closer to postseason. So Mariners on the road facing the Oakland Athletics tonight, 7.05 start time on Root Sports. If you want to win tickets to an upcoming home game, get ready to call right now to play in studio Mariners KCOK Music Trivia. We're going to play you a song clip. You tell us the title, the artist, the year it came out. Derek, play the song, please. All right, call right now. 800-252-1025. Artist, song title, year it came out. First person to correctly tell us wins tickets to an upcoming game. 705 tonight, Mike Leake versus Mike Fires. The Mariners announced they've acquired infielder outfielder Christopher Negron from the Diamondbacks in in exchange for cash money. I do not know the dollar amount. Wouldn't you want to (laughs) know? Yeah, definitely. How much am I worth? If I'm that player, I for sure want to know. And Los Angeles slugger Albert Pujols will miss the rest of the season after undergoing surgery on his left knee. He's an old-timer. We'll see what happens with him next season. 39 years old. Oh, man. But still has three seasons remaining on his 10-year, $240 million contract. Jeez Louise. (laughs) Yeah. That's a lot of Albert Pujols. It's a lot of money for a a, a sport I find questionable. (laughs) Well, on to a sport that you don't find questionable. Cheapo! Cheapo! <laughs> sort of. See? A lot of focus last night for preseason football on the backup quarterbacks, many of them trying to prove that they are the right choice. E.J. Manuel made a strong bid to be the Oakland backup quarterback. He threw for 255 yards, three touchdowns. The Raiders beat the Seahawks 
thirty to nineteen last night. Have, have we won a preseason game? No, nope. we lost all four of them. I think that's the first time the Hawks have ever done that. Wow. Makes me nervous. First winless preseason in franchise history. Yeah, that's not good. That's no. not. I mean, good. we talk about how they don't count unless you, if you win, right. then they count. It, but uh, they or they matter anyway. But to to lose all four of them, it's uh, it's pretty gut. It was gut a bummer. Oh, yeah, I've had bosses that tell you, you know, your standing doesn't mean anything in the radio show business. What really means something is the entertainment. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you show up seventeenth, and they go, huh? I was wrong. <laughs> yeah. Which that is matters. Well, Seattle's Austin Davis made a strong audition. Uh, the Seahawks have acquired Brett Hundley in a trade, so they are battling, and it likely means with acquiring Brett Hundley that we will not hang on to Austin Davis. But he looked good last night, which means somebody might pick him up so his career won't be over for the season. Yeah, we also saw a lot from uh, the quarterback, which is likely going to be the practice squad squad quarterback uh, Magoo is his name which, Madu? Magoo Magoo Magoo, oh, Magoo. No. his name is uh, I believe Alex Magoo but Mr. Magoo I like to call him <laughs> boy if, if he gets into uh, the game every time he drops anything they're gonna do Mr. Magoo references yeah, for right. sure we've also got a guy I'm probably gonna pronounce this wrong Demore Ia Stringfellow Demore Stringfellow there's not a Ia on the end of it but well, it's, it's Demore Stringfellow it's apostrophe it's a uh, demore apostrophe e a, so technically shouldn't it be demore? <laughs> I think Ia? he gets to decide technically what his name is. But, <laughs> but Stringfellow, yeah. great last name. I like it. Up next, well, the real season it starts September 9th. Regular season against the Broncos. Kickoff is at one twenty-five. That's a Sunday. College football tomorrow, UW versus Auburn, 12.30. WSU versus Wyoming, also 12.30. And tomorrow, the Sounders have a match with Sporting Kansas City with uh, that start time being 1 p.m. And tonight, game three of the Seattle Storm and Phoenix Mercury with a 7 o'clock tip-off. We've been playing in-studio Mariners, KZOK Music Trivia. Derek, play that song again. Okay, don't. <laughs> Charles in Lacey knew the answer. I know what always gets us in this room. The year. Do you guys know it? Yeah, I'm going to go 94. Yeah, 90, 95. I'm going to go 95. 97. Oh. Well, Charles yeah. and Lacey knew I Foo Fighters. 97. Can I pick that card back up? <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> no. Let's Google it and find out you're a cheater, Danny. Uh, it turns out. Charles and Lacey knew Foo Fighters ever long. 1997, he is going to the Jeep Winners window in our lobby to pick up tickets to what, Derek? Charles won tickets for the game on September 8th at 7, 10 p.m. versus the New York Yankees, which just happens to be Salute to Latin American Baseball Night. Salute, Salute to, to Latin, Latin American, American Baseball, Baseball Night. Night. The Mariners are set to host the New York Yankees for a huge weekend series beginning Friday, September 7th. Watch John Carlos Stanton and the Yankees slug it out with Nelson Cruz, Mitch Hanniger, and the Mariners. And on the 8th, the man, the Mariners honor the many great contributions that Latin Americans have made in baseball and wear special Marineros uniforms. Get seats while they last at Mariners.com. Um, the next chance to win will be Tuesday morning around the same time. I'm hoping that we have different tickets because I can't do that one. <laughs> you guys did it every single time. But you'll have another chance to win Tuesday morning, same time, same place. Sports brought to you by Bradley Johnson Attorneys at 1-800-DUIOA. Well, it is just a tad, a scotch, a smidge after 7 o'clock in the morning. And if you stay with us, just a few more minutes, 15 more minutes. It is put up your Dukes, as I understand it, the finale. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is Final the round. last of, because we did two weeks in a row of this game. Yeah. It's been fun. Yeah. Right? That's been fun. I was looking at Paul because it's his responsibility and I hate him. But yeah, no, it turns out they are very funny. The put up your Dukes is very good. So be here at 720 this morning. Play put up your Dukes and win tickets to uh, Battle of the Boat 117 coming up at the EQC. This is a very big travel weekend in America yeah. because Monday is Labor Day. The airports are already packed. They're warning people about uh, peak travel times and the ferries are going to be jammed. They're down a ferry and they said it's going to be just jam packed. A lot of people taking a nice vacation taking a nice holiday weekend but studies do show that americans do not use all of their vacation time and that taking 
three weeks of vacation actually raises your life expectancy. So you should be using should all your it, vacation sure. time. And some people want to just put their nose to the grindstone or they're worried about losing their job if they take vacation. But experts say it's good for you to take a break, that it raises your life expectancy. Not if you come back and you've been fired <laughs> for taking your God-given vacation time. But it's a specific study saying three weeks. You know, like they've checked. Is one week enough? Is five weeks enough? What's the right number? And they said three weeks of vacation raises your life expectancy. Over a course of a year or one three-week break? No, over the course of a year. Um, and I think three weeks, um, it doesn't mean four is bad or five or eight is bad. Eight it's, doesn't sound bad. <laughs> no. Uh, eight sounds like unemployment to me, which yeah, sounds right. bad. But it's I took a vacation three. one time when it last. Oh, yeah, 15 years <laughs> of vacation. <laughs> A lot of people don't take all their vacation days, meaning they're not taking three weeks of vacation, which means they could be living a shorter life. No, oh, that's just sad. But if they're the kind of people that won't take vacations, then, you know, I'm not rooting for them anyway. Take your vacation. <laughs> I know people like that. And I don't know. It, it bums me out. Just take a break. So do you want to know uh, if I'm taking my vacation or what I do to live longer? Well, I know you take your vacation because we tend to take our right. vacations at the same time. But I also know you've been pretty fixated on living a longer and healthier life. So I'm yeah, sure you're I doing Yeah, I want to see something. my wife get old. Yeah. That, that's my, my, my plan is to see her turn 60. And if I do that, I'll be 83. I can live to 83. Absolutely, that's you So can. one of the things, and I do things to extend my life. I, I uh, Not a lot. I don't eat well or anything like that. Uh, but one thing I've done recently, but specifically with certain goals, one of which they promised me I would live longer, I'm taking meditation classes. Mm. Oh, and yeah. it's hard for me. My mind wanders, man. My my, I parkour in my head. I'm jumping all over the place. <laughs> but that's the thing I'm doing right now, trying to clear the little mind and meditate. And they tell you that if you meditate on a regular basis, you'll live longer. So I'm trying it. I'm so surprised. You know, you've you told us that you were doing it when you got that app originally, and then you've mentioned it a few times. It stuns me that you are meditating. Well, it stuns me that I am meditating, and like yeah. I said, I'm not good at. But I've gone for the app on my phone yeah. to a real live Buddhist temple with real live Buddhists telling me stuff. Well, what about you guys listening? Do you do something because it's supposed to help you live longer or live healthier? Danny is taking meditation. All right, maybe I'm being a little bit severe. But they say that if you take three weeks vacation a year, you will live longer. Do you do something because it's supposed to help you live longer or live healthier? Here's the numbers to call. 1-800-252-1025 or text to 90627. Good morning to Mike and Sultan. Hey, Mike. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Stinky Sexy Yavaduchi. What up? Hey, I don't know if it's supposed to help me or not, but I'm telling myself this. I eat lots of bacon, and I drink lots of beer and tequila, and it's worked so far. Yeah, do you do, you do those <laughs> things together, or are they separate? I, I have been known to combine them, yes. Quite often, as a matter of fact. I was going to say, I've been somewhere that has a specialty drink. It's a shot of some kind of tequila with bacon chunks and something else, and that's their big drink. Oh. And in the world of... Uh, what are those uh, Bloody Marys these days? They hold a whole, whole side of pig in those drinks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, now they do. Uh, he said beer. He drinks a lot of beer, and beer is like 90% water. So really, he's just staying hydrated. Right. He drinks tons <laughs> of water. <laughs> There's a, a restaurant on Capitol Hill, a Malaysian restaurant called Kadai Makan. Super, super good food. But they have this crazy concoction. It's a giant vat filled with all sorts of Asian herbs that's supposed to be great for you. And they call it, I think, the grandmother. And so Matt and I, last time we went there, had it. And it's supposed to be, it's in like a teacup. What is it? I thought it was in a vat. It's in no, a, I'm not eating out of a vat. No, we drank it. It's um, We ordered it and it's it comes in a teacup and it was like moonshine. Wow. We were both so hungover the next day, but we thought it's got ginseng and all these weird, you They're know. They're all a, a gimmick. What? But I still do it. It's supposed to help you live longer. I will drink those disgusting Chinese herbs and spices till the cows come home. Yeah, I, I, I've tried that, and I, 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 you know, they say it's three thousand year old medicine compared yeah. to your one hundred year old medicine bondage. I said, yeah, mine works though. <laughs> Mine's not an acupuncture. There's somebody sticking needles in my sack. Yeah, because they're doing. What was the life expectancy three thousand years, years ago? ago. Hour, yeah. hour and a half. Have you ever done that, though, if you've gone to a Chinatown in a city and they've got all the crazy stuff and you were like, OK, you yeah. must do something. Oh, no. A hundred times I've yeah. done exactly. I go in and I'd say I can't sleep. 
because you can tell if that one works. And it was like a thing. I forget the other one. I said my back hurts, which it didn't. Yeah. But they made me something for pain. None of none of that worked. Yeah, yeah took an Advil. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> 800-252-1025, do you do something because it's supposed to help you live healthier or live longer? Let's talk to Andy in Tacoma. Hey, Andy. Hey, good morning, Destructicus and you beautiful people. What do you got going? Hey, you know, I just love getting mugged by you every morning. I picked up one of your mugs at the drag race. Yeah, you got one of the, uh, I was mugged by Danny Bonici mugs. I'm... I did, sir. Cool. Nice. You know, and what I don't do, I don't hurry anymore. Yeah, that's. I think that's a good. Uh, I think that's a good attitude. Don't hurry anymore. The yeah. stress is always being a rush. Yeah, that's it. The freaking stress. out. This traffic is killing me. I'm going to be ten minutes late. Take your time. I think that would work out, Andy. A, a lot of uh, doctors do advocate that. It's just hard. It's hard not to be in a rush because we're running late most of the time. Yeah, I don't like. I really <laughs> don't like being late. Yet I push it to the last minute. Yeah. Just right here, almost every morning, I yep. push it to the last minute. Do you do something because it's supposed to help you live longer or live healthier? Let's hear from Potato Chip in Seattle. Hey, Potato Chip. Good morning. Um, I have relations with my girlfriend three to four times a week. It helps me. Uh, it just it keeps me sane. <laughs> That's well, another thing experts say. No, I do the same good. thing. I, I have sex with his girlfriend yeah. three or four uh, times a week. I haven't made it up to three or four times, but a couple times a week with you, his girlfriend. You, well, yeah, you run out of money. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Oh, 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 I was oh. bringing him in on the oh, joke. I, now I feel bad, you bastard. Yeah, so like five, <laughs> ten seconds ago, we were having fun with him. Right. And then he's not there anymore. No. Suddenly, we're just having fun. Yeah. yeah. I was about to I ask think he him, likes us. how did you get the nickname? You know, why do they call you potato? No. Then you had right. to say his girlfriend second, charges you. The second his girlfriend couldn't make change, he didn't want to play with us anymore. <laughs> oh, I think it's weird and you should call back. Uh, we do have some texts into 90627. Uh, one person says, I started seeing doctors again on a regular basis, going and having, you know, checkups and Smart. physicals after years of not going to the doctor. So many of us put that off. Uh, Tracy says she uh, lives longer and healthier by uh, being a very active martial artist. Ooh. Nice. Let's have On the line, I had, I had all sorts of questions for her about her chosen martial art. Well, Tony and Kapowson is on the line. Tony, tell us what you do because it's supposed to help you live longer or live healthier. Well, if I didn't know it was hurting me, I'd have four or five beers a night. But because I, I don't want to hurt myself like that, I'll try to limit it to two. Okay, but, you know, as your doctor, can I just say uh, I think you're fine with four beers a night? You're you know, a grown man. It changes every day. Oh, moderate drinking is great. Having a drink a day is great. No Two drinking glasses is of good. One is good. Yeah. Nothing's good. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I'm pretty sure yesterday I saw something that said nothing is good. I chose to ignore that. <laughs> yeah, I would ignore <laughs> that as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's talk to Kozak and Sumner. Hey, Kozak. How's it going this morning, everyone? It's all good, man. What do you got? Sugar. I try to cut most of it out of my diet nowadays, but limit about five grams per mil. Now, do you, like, look at packaging, or do you just not add sugar yourself? I look at packaging, and uh, when I'm cooking fresh, I just not add sugar to my meals. Though, um, a weakness for ice cream, I ate a pint last night. You, ate, you, you <laughs> ate a pint of ice cream by yourself? You better be breaking up with your boyfriend or pregnant. Because <laughs> those are the only good reasons I think no, no. I'll, I'd do that. Ben and Jerry's. Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> all right. Yeah, but, I mean, there's no point in getting a pint of ice cream if you're not going to eat it all. Why wouldn't you get a quart if you're not going to eat it all? You don't want to know how long a pint of ice cream lasts me. No, I've seen you take one piece of candy and make it last you nine months or whatever it is. It seems crazy to me. And Dave in Federal Way, good morning. Half a day from Guam, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, yeah, I do uh, Gracie Baja Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for my frustrations when I'm frustrated at people. You know, sometimes you just need to strangle some people. Sure. And then uh, <laughs> okay. I do surfing to balance my spirit. A lot of people say that, yeah. that it's like a zen and it's supposed to be like your meditation, Danny. Yeah, except one where you have to paddle out against waves. Yeah. Not doing that. It's not, not my thing. Especially uh, in Washington. By the way, we're setting up a girl fight for you, yeah. huh, Dave? If you weren't listening earlier. <laughs> yeah, that's right. There's a lady that called in. Tracy. She's a 19-degree black belt, and you have to fight her. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, back to you. Rob in Louisville, <laughs> what do you do? Because it's supposed to help you live longer or healthier. Happy Friday, guys. Happy well, Friday. I recently went from a full-flavor cigarette down to an ultralight. I can already feel the difference. And how long till you quit? Um, I'm going to try to quit here in the next month or so. Have you used anything besides just cold turkey? Um, I'm trying that Chantex. 
Oh, and how's that working for you? Um, it's giving me some pretty freaky dreams. Yeah, man. Hey. Only- How about weird thoughts to suicide? You're not doing that, are you? No, I'm feeling pretty happy about that. Right. Cool. Well, you need to get off the cigarettes. There, uh, I got off about eight years ago, uh, and the change is not only so amazing. Packs of cigarettes, no matter ultralights or not, are twelve dollars a yeah. pack. Yeah, now. expensive. Just do, yeah, get away. But you feel Don't better. Stink. Yeah, no, you feel better almost almost right away. Within yeah. like 72 hours, you start feeling it. And then you start coughing gross stuff up. Ew. But you know while you're doing that, this is coming from somewhere. This is gross stuff right. that's in my that body. Right, stuff was that, inside that, your lungs. I put Oof. that there, yeah. So congratulations, man. Keep at it. Jody and Puyallup texted in a great answer on how she stays healthy. She does pole fitness. Oh, like yeah. Derek is very really familiar you. with the pole fitness. Yes. <laughs> I, <laughs> He's seen a lot of people uh, exercising I, in that manner. I don't know if I believe that that does anything for you. She's no? a stripper. No. I mean, I guess it depends on how many hours a day she does it. That, but they're but they're strip class. I mean, not strip class. Although there's that too. But there's the pole dancing yeah. fitness sure. classes. It's supposed to it's make you w- super strong. It's supposed to. I don't believe that it does. I, I you just, need her to come up here and show you. Is what yeah, you're saying? Yeah, that's <laughs> okay. exactly what so. I'm saying. Hey, it's time to play one final round of Put Up Your Dukes. Put Up Your Dukes. You can win a pair of tickets to Battle at the Boat 117 next Saturday night at the Emerald Queen Casino. If you want to. The Mighty Led Zeppelin on 102.5 KZOK, where we are giving you a chance to play Put Up Your Dukes. The number to call is 800-252-1025. We have been playing this game all week. It's been a little surprisingly difficult. It has been, but I promise you today is very simple. If yeah, you want to they're call really in simple. I, I think the, the uh, I, I don't even want to say anything, but a certain university was the answer <laughs> <Yeah>. yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Even I would have gotten in, in three words. I yeah. had that yeah. one yesterday. And Fridays tend to be the easy day, so I'm hoping that our contestant will be able to get this one right because the prize is fantastic. And but now if not, we, you should call one eight hundred two five two one zero two five right now to play put up your dukes, right? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, now we we never actually gave this out as a rule, but I think we can guess at this that all of the days in the past two weeks so far have contained the word duke. That's right. Right. Like yeah. we had Bo Duke and Patty Duke. And- okay, I fully don't understand the game if it's not if the answer's not Duke. <laughs> well, we never specifically said that it has the word Duke in right. it, but they all no, have. They, yeah. they all have. So what you're saying is if you call one eight hundred two five two one zero two five right now, there's a chance the answer is Duke well, something? Something. something so, Duke? Certainly going to be something with Duke. All right, let's play, my friends. One final round. Your chance to win tickets to Battle at the Boat 117 next Saturday night at the Emerald Queen Casino. We know Danny would fight any cast member of the Brady Bunch. Yeah. He would fight a juiced-up baseball player. Yeah. Danny would fight Screech and Dennis Rodman. In order for you to together? win. Together? Would you fight yeah, them together? I would, actually. Yeah. Okay. You have to believe tell it us- or not, I'd drop Rodman so fast that <laughs> yeah. I could get Rodman, like... Bigger they are, bigger they fall. I think there's a reasonable expectation that Screech might be able to fight. Here's how this game works. You have to tell us who Danny is challenging this time to put up their dukes. Our contestant is Eric in Puyallup. Good morning, Eric. How are you? Doing good. How are you doing? Good. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? I do. Do you understand the rules of the game? I'm pretty sure. Okay, then here we go. (laughs) Put up your dukes. If you are this nickname, it was given to a guy that I would absolutely never want to fight. First of all, because I'm a huge fan of his and his true grit and his 30-plus years as a major box office draw. And secondly, because he is six foot four inches tall of a rough and tumble cowboy that would probably mop the floor with me. So saddle up the horses, pilgrim, and tell me what nickname do I want to put up his dukes? Oh, that sounds like John Wayne there. Oh, well, and his nickname would be The Duke. There we go. <laughs> the I'm so Duke. scared for Here. Eric. <laughs> Congratulations, Eric. You have won a pair of tickets to Battle at the Boat 117 next Saturday night at the Emerald Queen Casino. You can pick up your prize at the Jeep Winner's Window in our lobby. Tickets are also available at emeraldqueen.com. You know, Lisa and Kim and other people standing on the line were going, is he getting this wrong? Oh, he's going to get it wrong. I'm going to get it right. (laughs) We still have a lot of show coming up at 7.50. If you can tell us where has Sarah's Beaver been, you can win VIP passes to The Predator before it's even in theaters September 14th. And up next is the big news of the day.
Hey, part of the big news of the day is somebody's divorcing you. That's okay. It's been brought to you by Goldberg Jones Divorce for Men. Call 1-800-DIVORCE or you can go online to goldbergjones.com. Well, one of the big stories, a Connecticut Roman Catholic priest who ran a methamphetamine ring has been dubbed Monsignor Meth is going back to prison. Okay. If it had been other, let's see, Pope of Pot, (laughs) Monsignor of Meth, what else is there? Cardinal, uh, Cardinal of Crack. Oh, Cardinal of Crack. It's <laughs> even a double entendre I don't think we should get into. So Monsignor Literally. Meth is going back to prison for nine months for failing another drug test while on supervised release. Oh, so he just uses, he's, or is he dealing? No, no, he was a huge he's dealer. He's a manufacturer. Yeah. He right. was a uh, operating a methamphetamine ring. But using his own stuff, too? That's what yep. they're testing him for? Yeah, he's getting high on his own supply. Don't do that. Nope, wrong, bad rules. Well, he had been sentenced to five years and then was freed on supervised release. While out on supervised release, Monsignor Meth started using again. So he is now going back to the pokey. Bummer. Costco. Oh, you were making a silly, terrible face Not and I didn't understand why. <laughs> and now I get it. It was, hey, ask me what's going to happen to the Monsignor Meth. What's going to happen to this uh, clergyman? He's going to the pokey. <laughs> That's my impression of Sarah. (laughs) Costco is known for having one of the most lenient return policies of any major chain store. Didn't somebody return something after six years or something like that? Yeah, that's happened a lot in the past. It has happened a lot of times. The most recent one you might be thinking of, Danny, was somebody returned a Christmas tree because it had died after the holiday. Yeah. Yeah, it was like January something. Yeah, and it was brown and awful. They most always accept the return. Now, stories have popped up for ages. The the old Christmas tree, a half-eaten steak, a 13-year-old fish, an empty bottle of wine was returned because she claimed it gave her a headache. <laughs> Costco has accepted all of these returns. But? Now there is a woman who says her membership has been revoked because she was trying to make a return. They do have some exceptions electronics are returnable within 90 days. Yeah, they changed that a couple of years ago because it used to be the same thing. You could take it back years Mm -hmm. later and just trade it in for a new TV. Which is why they had to stop it because, you know, people were trading in just because they wanted new technology. Yeah. Diamonds are only accepted within 48 hours of original purpose. uh, Paperwork, sorry, original purpose. That's because she's going to dump you and you know it. They know it. (laughs) You're going to want your money back. Quite possibly. Cigarettes and alcohol returns have never been accepted. This woman now claims... I thought somebody's returning wine because it gave her a headache. Is that this lady? It was empty. Ah. (laughs) (laughs) So she goes to return a printer eight years later. She was told you, first of all, have to go back to the original store to make a return... But no, we will not take a printer that you're returning eight years later. And they can said, take back this printer. I hate it. Well, they said, why do you want to return this? And she said, well, it's not working anymore. Well, this is eight years later. They said, okay, we're going to give you your money back. We're going to refund you your membership cost and don't shop here again. Wow. So, so this is in the news because she's causing, she's mad about it. She's mad about it. And Costco has not confirmed, but the um, senior vice president said, she claims the senior vice president is who told her that they will not accept her anymore. Huh. Kind I'm of, okay with it. Yeah, uh, the stories I've heard in the past when, when this happened, I haven't it hasn't necessarily been a specific item, but they've racked up so many returns yep. that finally they just have to cut people off and yeah. say, All right, you bring There's back everything half used. One lady she brought back in her wedding dress and she said, I bought this here and I want to return it. And they said, uh, uh, okay, uh, she goes, Why? or something like that. I don't remember the whole story off the top of my head. And she said, We're getting a divorce. And the lady said, how long were you married? And she said, 16 years. And she's giving her the turn, and that's when she realizes, wait, you got married in this yeah. time. And they gave her the money back, as wow. I understand Crazy. it. It's amazing. Disneyland visitors who explore the new Star Wars Galaxy Edge yeah. expansion that opens next year will be invited to belly up to a dimly lit Star Wars-inspired cantina where for the first time inside the park, they can order alcoholic drinks. Two things are happening. Three things are happening already. One, booze at Disneyland. Yeah. Yeah. Even as a non-drinker now, that always bothered me that I couldn't get a drink. I had to smuggle stuff in. It was getting harder to do. 
um, the snake booze into Disneyland. But the other things that were happening, they're reenacting a very famous scene from the cantina where two things are happening just there. One's the music. Whatever that horrible. That was pretty good. Thank you. And now I'm going to find out if Han Solo actually shot first. Who shot and first? that's a big thing. And by the way, the answer is Han. Of course he <laughs> shot that guy. The guy's a bounty hunter. There are new artist renderings that were released yesterday on the Disneyland blog that show a dark tavern where stormtroopers, bounty hunters, smugglers, and other alien travelers are all around a bar being served various concoctions. They said that this will be called Oga's Cantina and it will serve libations for adults. Now, Walt Disney opposed the sale of alcohol in his parks, saying he felt the introduction of booze would ruin the family atmosphere. But that is about to change. They're overruling the dead guy. Yeah. So they did a couple of things to overrule Walt Disney. I guess I wonder if they went back and asked his head. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Frozen Walt Disney head, can we do this? It doesn't but talk, right? He, I, who knows? He could make it talk. He's Walt Disney. <laughs> um, but the thing is with that, he didn't ever want roller coaster type rides or scary rides. He wanted these the teacups and things like that. Yeah. And so that's why they opened up California Adventure. It's still not. They didn't coexist or co-mingle with Disneyland. It's a new and special thing. So his rules usually hold up. Yeah. Well, his reasoning was no liquor, no beer, nothing, because that brings in a rowdy element. That brings in people we don't want here. I feel they don't need it. I, I think he's right about all of the things right up to the point where I don't get what I want. I got my money in my pocket. <laughs> give me what I want. Because you're right, he doesn't want a bunch of drunks going around the haunted mansion and stuff. I get what he yeah. was after, but I'm alive and he's dead. And I have my <laughs> money in my pocket. <laughs> We've all seen the Snickers commercials that have been airing recently that show somebody, um, usually it's a famous person, Betty White and uh, Abe Vigoda, and it's somebody who's not behaving properly. They give him a Snickers bar and then poof, they go back into their regular body. My, is right. this making sense? No, Turn I know exactly the commercial, yeah. but they, what happens is you have a professional boxer, Mike Tyson. Yeah. And he's going, I'll kill you. I'll kill your whole family. I kill everybody you know. And his friend says, you need to calm down, man. Have a Snickers. Why? You're not yourself and you don't have a Snickers. Bite. Turns into Betty White. Right, yeah. Right. Well, this is happening again with Elton John taking part. Elton John's my new hero in this kind of stuff. You need to see he's this really commercial. Fun. This is super funny. He is taking on the role of a rising rapper named Boogie, and he's playing the hungry alter ego. So you've set up the premise. You know exactly what it is. Somebody's right. not acting like themselves. So here's a little bit of the audio. Rap battle. I couldn't if I could. Whoa, what? stop right there. What? Here, eat a Snickers. Better. Yo, I said, give me the track. I'm finna snap. You know, <laughs> yep, there you go. So that's Elton John singing his part of Don't Go Breaking My Heart. Go with Kiki D. Great uh, sense of humor for. I, just, I told you, Elton I saw John. him on The Kingsman or whatever that show was, America's, uh, no, the Her Majesty's Secret Service. And he played Elton John being held captive, but then he gets kind of mad and he starts using terrible language and fist fighting, oh, doing wow. flying sidekicks. It was hysterical. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you just wouldn't think. Somebody of that status, like he doesn't need to do a Snickers commercial. Plus, oh, great sense of humor. Bernie Taupin did not write the words, the bitch is back, because he's easy to be around. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Hart has had a bit of a stand, a bit of in his stand up routine where he attempts to trash talk his way out of a fight and he ends up offering a hug instead. Yeah. It says, this is dumb. I don't want to fight you. This is stupid. You've got to have purpose. I'm not that guy. And then he goes and tries to hug them. Well, he has his jokes about fighting, and now he is getting into fighting. He says he won't be getting inside the cage, but he is an investor in an upstart MMA promotion for a professional fighters league card. He said, I want to be the guy who's at the fights, that people know that I'm an investor, but I'm not just anonymous. I want people to associate this league and this fight with Kevin Hart, and I am going to be their ringside, so to speak. Are all the fighters going to be little guys, too? <laughs> they should be. Reasonable question, man. Uh, I'll tell you, I know exactly what started all this. He's got a new movie coming out called Teacher or GED or something like that. Derek, do you know about Kevin Hart's new movie where he goes back to school to get his GED? I haven't seen it. Oh, the teacher is uh, failing him, and I think there's going to be a love interest. I don't know. I just saw one commercial. But when he doesn't do well, 
He walks into a ring and goes, why, why are we in the ring? That's my Kevin Hart, and that, that was, was actually terrible. spot on. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, she goes, what's the square root of 81? And he says, I don't know. And she punches him in the face, <laughs> and she's an MMA fighter. Yeah. And she beats him up until he has the answers right. So cool. maybe that sparked his interest in this. Well, if you want to see it, you will be able to because they're going to be airing some of this on NBC Sports Network. Wow. But he is part owner of the PFL. By the way, there's a list of people and things that I'd fight, like antelopes and yeah. uh, Dennis Robin. Kevin Hart, totally. <laughs> Although I love him. He's probably my favorite working comic right now, or one of the top three anyway. But if I had to go a couple rounds with the only entertainer I know shouldered me, I'll take on Kevin Hart right now. <laughs> I want to see that. I'll give it a heart attack. That's what it'll be called, my heart attack. I'll That's spell it differently. That's the big news of the day, brought to you by Goldberg Jones. Divorce for men, 1-800-DIVORCE or online, goldbergjones.com. All right, here's what you should do. You should probably start calling right now, 1-800-252-1025. Why, you ask? I'll tell you. Because if you know where Sarah's Beaver's been, that's why you need to call. If you know where Sarah's Beaver's been, uh, you're going to win VIP passes to see Predator before it even ends up in theaters on September 14th. If you know where Sarah's Beaver's been, 1-800-252-1025. Call now. Ah, do, do, do. Oh, a triple one. <laughs> I do, do. It's a lot of do's. Yeah, it's a lot of do's. Ah, do, do. <laughs> That's too much. It's a lot of do. All around town. Because Sarah's Beaver was on Patches of the Clown. Come on, Sarah, won't you give me a clue? I'll find your beaver and I'll be calling you. Where's Sarah's Beaver? I got to know. Where's Sarah's, Sarah's Beaver? beaver? I gotta know. Where's Sarah's Beaver? On Where Danny's are we? Show, uh, Casey, okay. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Well, of course you want to win because we've got a cool prize this week. Yeah. VIP passes to see The Predator before it hits theater September 14th. You know, as much as I watch TV, I haven't seen the commercials for this. I would I would love to see which way they're going to go. with it. I loved that movie. I've I have actually had too. three different people just stop me in the hallway. People just work around here and listen to the show. And they said, hey, can I get some of those yeah. Predator passes? <laughs> people are excited about people the movie. love the Predator. And you told them to go to Facebook.com slash Sarah's Beaver or KZOK.com and look at the Beaver shots. That's exactly what win. I told them. I didn't just take passes out of my pocket and hand them to them. <laughs> <laughs> or just say no. Any of those things didn't happen. I said to one guy, who are you? <laughs> There's a lot of that around here. Each week, the beaver goes someplace new. Let's see if Brad and historic Kent knows where she went this week. Brad knows everything, right, Brad? I do, or I fake it good anyway. All right, let's hear it. Uh, Sarah's beaver was hanging out with a two-dimensional Sue Bird in front of the key. <laughs> That's right, Whoa. it was the Sue Bird bobblehead. That is. Oh, I thought he was thrill. just calling her shallow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's a little bit two-dimensional for me. No, Be I get it now. Beaver's excited because if the storm wins tonight, then uh, they're moving on to the WNBA Finals Ooh, again. Again. So she went to cheer them on. Go Storm. Go Brad. That's go right, Brad. my friend. You have won those VIP passes to the Predator before it's in theater September 14th. You're going to the Jeep Winners window in our lobby to pick up your prize. Congratulations. Hey, let us uh, chat about the iHeartRadio uh, Music Festival. It's happening September 21st and 22nd in Las Vegas. It's the iHeartRadio Music Festival bringing some of the biggest names in music to the T-Mobile Arena. And we would like to send you free of charge, including hotel and air tar- uh, airfare for two. Your next chance to win happens in, oh, like five minutes. So yeah. stay right nice. there. This week uh, and last, there was a big conference in Europe with people getting together, warning of... Terminator coming to life. Right. I'll be back. Well, he says he'll be back, and he was, right? So initially, Terminator 1, Arnold Schwarzenegger's a bad guy. Right. And he's trying to kill Sarah Connor. Right. And then he says, I'll be back, and then he comes back, and he's a good guy. But everybody remembers the premise of Terminator, right? Yeah. They do now. You just told us. The whole, the whole, <laughs> like, the whole Every thing. Second of I, it. Just, I just acted the whole <laughs> thing out. Roll the credits. <laughs> <laughs> well, Skynet 
turns on its creators and becomes killer computers. Yeah. All seemingly possible to me. Definitely. And they've been, yeah. Here's yeah. what happens if you ask me. Movies dictate the future, really. If you look at like the old Flash Gordon, not cartoons, but they were ba- barely starting to use a, a space hero back in the very, very, very early, early days of television, the 50s. His spacecraft looks exactly like the space shuttle. And why? Because people that designed it grew up watching him. So I think all of this could happen, but it's not like magic. It's because we accidentally make it all yeah. happen. Right. Yeah, and, and it's pretty scary to think about killer robots, to think that we are going to create computers that are so smart they they can outthink us yeah. and then turn on us and turn into killers. It's and scary. We have a computer right now called Watson who seems to be learning every day. He lost a Jeopardy to a champion, but I bet he think he came back and won, mm-hmm. and that friggin' thing keeps getting smarter. And most computers do. It's it's pretty frightening, and you do think that maybe that is the future, but having smart computers and you know having like a maid in your house that's a computer or something, that's not the end of the world, but there's plenty of stuff from fiction that we don't want to be real at all. No, I, I will tell you a future uh, that I don't want to see. You guys see uh, Woody Allen's movie Sleeper? Yep. Probably one of the funniest movies of all time. It's got a thing in it called the Orgasmatron. Right. And it sounds great. You get in, you make a lot of crazy noises. Then the door opens and five, ten seconds later, you're out and you're Mr. Completely Satisfied. Why do I not want to sound that when yeah, it seems why? so bitchy? Because they outlaw chicks, essentially. Oh. You don't do it anymore with people. Oh. They don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah. When you give them a kiss, they go, what the hell was that? And nothing else happens. <laughs> so you hop in the orgasmatron all by yourself. I do not want that future. <laughs> Something from fiction that I don't want to become real, you guys will get it right away. Zombies. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you know I'm petrified of the zombie apocalypse. I would be totally cool if that never happens. Like, The Walking Dead never happens. I was talking about this last night to Amy, and I said the zombie apocalypse, and she said, now nah, leave that for Sarah. Sarah's more afraid of the zombie apocalypse than you are. <laughs> Damn, she was uh, right, because you've talked me into it. It's yeah. Like, it might be a thing. Yep. The more of these shows that I, I watch, though, I feel like I'm better prepared, so I think I might be okay. Right. True. You'd be dead for sure, Sarah. You'd be Plus, dead for sure. they're so slow. Like, I know yeah. that gets said a lot, but if you get caught by a zombie and he eats your brains, it's kind of you were asking for it. Why'd you wear that dress anyway? Well, what oh, is something thing. from <laughs> fiction that you do not want to become real? Some of this fictitious stuff, like, you know, Back to the Future, all those things are kind of cool, but what? Don't you want to become real? Call us and tell us, 800-252-1025 or text in 90627. All righty then. Here is the deal I would like to make known with you guys. They say the Terminator situation could really happen. What is something from fiction that you don't want to become real? Here's the phone number, 1-800-252-1025 or text to 90627. Good morning, Don and Puyallup. Hello. Hi, guys. So what do you think, buddy? Something from fiction you do not want to become real. I do not want to be uh, an appetizer to Jurassic Park or any of the dinosaurs. Yeah, uh, right, totally cool. true. Cloning dinosaurs? Yeah, yeah, we should probably not do that. Although, we shouldn't. All uh, of the uh, monster dra- uh, not dragons, the d- dinosaurs that everybody's so afraid of, there's only like two actual meat eaters, I think. Yeah. Everybody else is eating plants. So yeah, unless your name is Robert, uh, it was almost going to be funny too. Um, but you have nothing to worry about from the dinosaurs that, that only eat uh, vegetation. Well, watch out for those meat eaters, though. Yeah, totally. The, it's I don't even remember, but you can tell the one because he's got the big, gnarly teeth, and then those little ones, but I'll fight the little ones. <laughs> <laughs> what is something from fiction you do not want to become real? 800-252-1025. Sam and Everett, hello. Hey, Sam. Hey, how are you guys today? All good, thanks. What's up? Um... I've, I've heard of, of the military and other places who want to make the weather machine, and I'm really thankful that men can't control that. Well, I got to say this then. How do you know? 
seriously, think about the hurricanes that we've had that have destroyed us, and China has been turned upside down. How do you know those were all natural? How do you know we didn't figure out the weather machine? Well, the weather machine then would uh, eliminate drought, and it would eliminate the heat waves. And... Right, but what he's worried about is something I've seen a million times, is weaponizing nature. Right, yeah. And he's talking about, I, I believe, Sam is talking about you know the... the, the turning a uh, tornado or hurricane to where you want it to go. As Using it for evil right, rather than for of good. good. Let's uh, go to James and Bothell and asking you, James, what is something from fiction you do not want to become real? Good morning, all. Morning. Yeah, well, see, if aliens take over the world, we're going to have to change our food and, and our cuisine to whatever they eat. <laughs> and that's the that. one thing you're worried about with aliens taking we over the world. Is... Eat, and here's the thing: <laughs> what if they eat us? As that has already been discussed. Be, what if that's well, their the major their major diet? Yeah. Oh, but what if they eat the McRib, and now we get the McRib <laughs> whenever we want? That would be awesome. That would be awesome. I had not thought of that. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. What is something Luckily, from fiction? Luckily, James was here. You do not want to become real, John and Historic Kent. Hey, John. Hello, pick of the pack, top of the stack, golden nugget, because you dug it. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> wow. Hi. Were you a disc jockey 50 years ago? <laughs> well, maybe. Opinions vary. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I like, it. I like, I like it, it. All right, what do you got for us? <laughs> you know, I, I, I have war games. I, I don't I don't want to see Ferris Bueller uh, start World War III and have some 12-year-old hack into our national defense system. Well, you are <laughs> such an ageist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have a Ferris Bueller or some 12-year-old. Hey, here's my best impression ever. Ready? One, two, play a game. No, yeah. not that good. That's, yeah. That's not yeah. even what he says. I blew it. <laughs> Shall we play a game? <laughs> Dave and Everett, what is something from fiction you do not want to become real? Flying cars. Oh, Tell us what? why. Yeah, why do you want that? People can't drive in two dimensions as it is. You give them three dimensions to move in, and it's going to be Death Race 2000 in the skies. Okay, first of all, nice reference to Death Race 2000. I enjoyed <laughs> that movie a great deal. Uh, but He's kind of right. I, I, but here's the thing. How do you, have you seen how rarely planes crash into each other accidentally? Yeah, because there's yeah. one master flight controller telling them where to go. Exactly. So all the, how, how many cars are on the road? Instead of going, though, but here's what I'm saying. Instead of going east and west, a certain, like, let's just say east goes at 100 feet. And west goes at 150 feet. And south goes at 200 feet. So now you're always having one quarter of the vehicles in front of you that would normally have. No. I think it would be safer. I'm with Dave. No flying cars. Man, no, everybody wants a flying car. How can you not want a flying car? I want a flying car. Everybody wants sure. a flying car. I'm with, I'm with Dave. Dawn right. and Stanwood, what is something from fiction you do not want to become real? Hey, good morning, you people. What do you what mean, mean, you people? people? I'll tell you what. If you guys remember Logan's Run sure. with uh, early Farrah Fawcett, man, that's pretty scary when the world gets so overpopulated that, what, I think it was you turned 30 and they put you to death so they could keep population controlled. <laughs> I will take a flying car, though. See, everybody <laughs> says, she's, she and Sam are insane. But yeah, Logan's Run, you had a dot in your hand, and it would age for you, meaning it would just turn colors. Mm -hmm. And when it got blue or red or green, I don't really remember, you were 30, but you were tricked. You thought you were going to see some spirit leader, and you got zapped into space and particles, but really, they were murdering you. And that's really nice. I, I like that. Logan's Run was great. They redid that movie with Ryan Gosling or Justin Timberlake or some handsome blonde-headed dude. Uh, tanked at the box yeah, office. Yeah, they also made a TV show at Tank there, too. It was supposed to be good, apparently, that one time. Tabitha calling from Historic Kent. We got a lot of calls from Historic Kent this morning. Yeah, we do. Hi, honey. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, <laughs> Go ahead and tell us, what is something from fiction you don't want to become real? Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. Oh, Fair yeah, watch out for that. I yeah. will tell you Vegetables. something, uh, Tabitha. As weird of a reference as that is... I brought it up yesterday on the show. <laughs> he yeah. did for some reason. The Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. Well, Tabitha sounds like she's 16, too. Tabitha, are you 16? 15. <laughs> How old? 15. Oh, it's close. She's watching some great movies yeah, for a 15-year-old. I'm just retro. thinking now, change angles on what you were going to say right now. There's a 15-year-old girl <laughs> on the phone. I like Tabitha. I, I like, like Tabitha, but in a, you know, like in a vunkular sense. Of course <laughs> yeah. she is. I'm probably friends with her mom and dad. We go to right. coffee and stuff. Good old Uncle Danny. Yeah, Uncle, well, that sounds even grosser. <laughs> we have some texts in 90627. Uh, watch out for the giant asteroid from Armageddon. Oh, I don't want that to happen. People nope, are worried nope. about that. I don't want anything that sounds like I have a giant asteroid. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, too hard. People do not want to live on a planet that is ruled by apes. 
And I don't blame them. No, I don't blame either. I, you know what? I'll take. Uh, I don't want anybody unless it's ours to have a Death Star. <laughs> it's got the word death in it. Yep. Right. Yep. I'll pass on that. Yeah. I don't need that. You don't need it. I don't need a Darth Vader or any of those guys. I have four, no, five texts in to 90627 saying uh, the worst thing that could possibly happen comes uh, as a plot line from the show The Simpsons, and that would be Donald Trump becoming president. <laughs> Yeah. They called it. They called it like 20 years ago. They did call it a long time ago. <laughs> well, by the way, I mean, not not bad, but he ran for president twice more. He tried to be the president. He has a billion dollars. He wasn't like, it's not like you didn't notice that he was trying to become the president. I just, I'd, I'm i shocked that they made him president because I swore he would never be the president. And Sorry. I would, I'd probably get arguments from people on the text line that, that said this, but Attack of the Killer Tomatoes has to be worse than a Donald Trump presidency, right? No. No? Okay. No. <laughs> Tori, what is something from fiction so. you don't want to become real? The girl from The Ring. Who wants a little girl that can climb out of your TV and kill you? Yeah, I'll pass on that. Thank you. Frightening. Is she cute? No. <laughs> she <laughs> I don't want like, to yeah. drowned. Uh, Paul, what is Just because she's drowned doesn't make her bad. Paul, what's something from fiction you don't want to become real? Uh, this happened in uh, one of the greatest movies of all time, which is Spaceballs. Yeah. Uh, the starship in Spaceballs. Spaceball 1, I think they call it. Uh, can change into a robot maid with a giant vacuum cleaner <laughs> that can suck all of the air out of the atmosphere of any planet. Right, I saw it. I don't think we should develop that. That would be uh, bad. Uh, Derek, what do you think? Werewolves, man. Scary. <laughs> did you just give up? Like about three days ago, did you just give up on us? You want werewolves? I don't think you do. <laughs> I mean, you can't I argue against that. werewolves. I can't argue with that. I can't argue with that. Thanks for the calls and texts, people. We will be right back with the news. News is brought to you by Les Schwab. Four people had to run for their lives when a fire broke out overnight at an Everett duplex. Crews responded to the scene on Locust Street about 2 a.m. They had received multiple 911 calls about smoke and flames at a residence. Half of the duplex was fully engulfed in flames when the first responders arrived. Firefighters were able to prevent the blaze from spreading into the second duplex, and thankfully, no injuries reported. Another mutilated cat has been discovered in Thurston County, this time near Lacey, bringing the total to 13. Unlucky number 13, and I'll bet you did something terrible to a black cat. Don't you know that you're going to be caught soon and bad things are going to happen to you? I certainly hope you're right that they get caught soon and bad things happen. Yeah. Well, they uh, say that the uh, money is up to $36,000 for you know, finding this person. So if you know anything, please contact the Thurston County Sheriff's Office. Plus, if you know somebody, you'd way rather have $30,000 than that guy's friendship. Right. That guy's a <laughs> terrible person. He kills little kitties. Take the money and run. A 34-year-old man has filed an $800,000 lawsuit against a construction company because he says the owner fired him after he refused to attend weekly Bible study. Ryan Coleman's lawsuit states he was uh, found, hired as a painter and then that they said to him, you know you're going to have to partake in regular Bible studies. And he said, what are you talking about? I don't, I don't want to study the Bible. This would be during the workday while on the clock. Yeah. Well, he told his employer that that's illegal and the owner of the company wouldn't budge, said if you want to keep your job, you need to do Bible study. I'm real curious how this plays out because I, I don't know. I know who I feel is right uh, morally, if you will, and it's the guy. You can't hire a guy and make him pray. It's against the rules. But you're on the clock. You're getting paid. I'm interested in how this, this flushes out. Well, he has filed this lawsuit, so we will find out soon uh, You know which direction this goes. It certainly does seem to be highly illegal. Can't you say I'm Jewish or Czechoslovakian or I don't know? He's half Caucasian and half Native American. (laughs) Yeah, he's got other gods to deal with. His beliefs are indigenous. (laughs) What? (laughs) He's he's just that he's Czechoslovakian. He's going to tell him he's Czechoslovakian. Yeah, I'll do it right there. I go. You don't have to pray. You're Czechoslovakian. Doesn't doesn't exist anymore. But (laughs) if if, if you got a problem right here, just put your mark. Oh, check there. Look, he's out. (laughs) And God always exists, Sarah. (laughs) <laughs> a new study on sexual health may have a lot of men running to right on. on according to scientists in greece olive oil may be better than viagra when it comes to boosting sexual performance she's too skinny <laughs> <laughs> 
This study published by the University of Athens examined over 600 men and found an olive oil rich diet cut the risk of erectile dysfunction by up to 40 percent. Wow. Switch to the Mediterranean style diet. Men replace. That's a real thing. Yes. The Mediterranean diet. It's not like, oh, yeah, you should eat more of this, more of that. It's an actual thing. If you look it up online, they'll say the real ingredients to a Mediterranean diet. And it's it's pretty basic. Fruits, vegetables, nuts, fish. fish. Yeah. Um, Some chicken. Olives and olive oil. No butter. Replace all butter with olive oil. They also did not eat a lot of processed meats. And they say this appears to be a drug-free solution. And long-term, the problem with Viagra is it's short-term. Gives you, you know, There should be less hours. than four hours, right? Yeah. <laughs> but the Mediterranean diet can help you with diabetes, getting rid of high blood pressure, lowering obesity levels. And now Mr. Happy's. If you know, this week, they'll say that. Remember two weeks ago or three weeks ago, your life would be enhanced and live longer if you had two glasses of wine each day. Right. Now, a drop of alcohol will kill you by <laughs> Thursday. So same thing with this. This will all be different later. I wouldn't run out and change my diet. Unless, by the way, all the things on this diet are scrumptious. Yeah, so why if wouldn't you, wanna, you change your yeah, diet feel to get free. Mr. Happy? But I don't know that your wiener is going to like uh, sing its praises. <laughs> Although if your wiener doesn't sing, you're not as happy as I am. I think if you are... are going to rely on viagra why wouldn't you just switch to a healthy diet that included olive oil switch because one's medicine and one's pasta no switch your lifestyle switch up your life change your lifestyle a little bit to accommodate a mediterranean diet and you might have a healthier sex life why wouldn't you do that why and he, he, hear me out why wouldn't you do both <laughs> Yeah, hey, I'm going to have the Mediterranean diet. I'm going to be thinner. I'm going to be healthier. I may have a Mr. Happy. I may have one even longer. And I'm going to top that off with a Viagra. This thing's going to be here all day. <laughs> a Florida man was charged with marijuana possession and a license plate violation. That is what got him pulled over in the first place. However, it's not why he was arrested. Brandon McComas was driving his car. Deputies noticed the license plate was out. Uh, the license plate light was out. He then pulled over, uh, said, stop. When he walked up to the driver's side door, he note, the cop noticed the man as attempting to conceal a large bulge in his left front pocket. He then did a pat down and said, what is this bulge in your pants? And he but, said, I'm just on the Mediterranean diet. So. <laughs> Nicely done, man. No, he said, that's what she said. <laughs> Even did. better. That's all. Wait, give me, the, give me the thing again. Give to me the, the line cop. again. What's this bulge in your pants? That's, That's what, what she, she said. said yeah. Grammatically, it's what she asked, <laughs> but I think you did all right. Yeah. Uh, That's not really how it goes from the office, but they he did not find it hilarious. <laughs> he should have. Yeah. If I'm the cop, I'm going to laugh and maybe just well, let him go. I'm going to laugh while arresting him, but yeah. either way, I'm going to laugh. Well, that's when he found out the bulge had nothing to do with his male anatomy. It was a cylindrical plastic case containing marijuana and a glass pipe, and then a second pipe full of an unknown substance. Wow. He and his I, big I'd bulge. I'd let him go for the pot. Yeah. yeah. What, dear? It said he and his bulge are going to jail. Burglars who hit up a shoe store left with mm, something different than what they were anticipating. Not shoes? Because I, I would think shoes when I get there. That is what I would think. Well, they got a whole lot of right shoes. Uh, uh, of course they did. They didn't go in back. They're just <laughs> taking them off the shelf. Is that right? Is that what they did? Because they're st they're, they should go to jail for just being stupid. <laughs> Even exactly I know that. That's what happened. They went in, stole a bunch of shoes, and they only put the right shoes on display. The left are behind the counter. The burglars did not know that and stole a whole lot of right shoes. <laughs> what a bummer. <laughs> Diabetes is a problem that has been plaguing America for quite a while now. We have several different drugs that can help fight it. However, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has issued a warning that a class 2 diabetes drug might cause flesh-eating bacterial infections of your genitals. It's that seems worse than diabetes. Yeah, totally. Uh, <laughs> I was it just yesterday, the day before, we st we started talking about something else. Oh, sex! Mm -hmm. What did sex give mm -hmm. you? Flesh eating bacteria? A new STD. That's yeah, let's right not do that. And now there's this one, just trying to cure your diabetes. 
So yep. do they have to list that in the commercial as one of the side, side effects? effects? Possible side effects include dizziness, vomiting, flesh-eating bacteria that will eat your genitals. <laughs> yeah, he's right. Yes, but all they really need to do is call it Fournier's gangrene or necrotizing fasciitis. Oh, yeah. Go with the first one. It sounds more No, I like appetizing. the necrotizing fasciitis. Yeah, that sounds scary, though. Remember that guy we used to work with? What's his name? Fa- fa- Fashionus? <laughs> something? Fashana? Yeah, same thing. He'll eat your flesh. Necrotizing Fashana. Yeah. That's yeah. what they yeah, called exactly. him. exactly. That's why he left. He ran out of uh, the people here to devour to their, their skin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi, Mike. <clears throat> Now, they have said this Fournier's gangrene. You realize is, you sound like you're saying fornicate. Fournier. <laughs> Fournier. Still, you, still, you still sound like it. Yeah. Is that better? It's an infection of tissue under the skin that surrounds muscles, nerves, fat, blood vessels all around the perineum. No, not the perineum. Mm. I would like to prevent my, prevent my perineum from being <laughs> penalized. Remember that time you made Gibbons measure your perineum? I do. Mm. Why would you do that? I, because it was fun. <laughs> oh, okay. All I right. said, here, measure this. I get it now. There was some correlation between the size of the perineum and the size of something else. Danny was convinced his was 12 inches. <laughs> I'm still convinced mine is 12 inches. And goes the weird direction. <laughs> anyway, the drug reaction to this drug is is rare but it is possible and the fda wants you to know be careful about these type 2 diabetes drugs yeah. wow i really want to see that commercial now <laughs> or for sure we'll eat your flesh some might call new details of a massive fentanyl bust a little bittersweet just a few weeks ago three people were arrested after deputies seized what was believed to be 13 pounds of fentanyl in a north carolina drug raid it's a lot of fentanyl yes now, they had been selling to undercover cops, so they knew they had busted a drug ring. And then they found the 13 pounds. They're like, fantastic. Well, they took it to the lab, and unfortunately, it turns out, wasn't fentanyl. It was oh. sugar. How did they not know that like, before <laughs> yeah. they... Well, remember, Danny <laughs> so said back questions. in the olden days, you'd dip your hand, finger in and lick it, Taste and then you'd know. Yeah, don't right. do that with the fentanyl. Exactly. No, okay, you did. So they didn't. But what about the stuff they successfully purchased? Why didn't they test that? Well, they had purchased heroin, marijuana, drug paraphernalia. They had gotten other stuff from this drug ring. But when they went in for the big bust, they thought it had gotten even bigger right. with this record number of fentanyl. It was just sugar that they had been using to cut other bits of their drugs. Wow. Not the best whack either, by the way. Sugar. I'm guessing you're not going to get a great high from that. Oh, you That's don't sure. get any high from the, and the less you get from any kind of cut, the better. Any flavor, any taste, any effects, anything like that. But you want to go with Manit or Manitol. Always flavorless, super light, makes a nice powder, and you'd be much more regular because it's, it's an Italian baby laxative. Oh, nice. That's the cut. You Plus, so many people are cutting this. sugar out of their diet these days. Yeah, so totally. If you put that on the ingredients list, you nobody's going to want to buy you it. You can snort it, <laughs> shoot it, swallow it. It's still going to go right to your butt. Yeah. A 29-year-old woman was issued a summons for prostitution. After she called the police to report she hadn't been paid enough for her recent services. As Victoria, a prostitute. Yes. <laughs> Victoria Baker called 911 10 o'clock in the morning and said, I just had adult relations with this guy and now he's not paying me the agreed upon price. Well, they arrived at the scene and the man was gone and she said, well, I want to file charges. They took her into custody and she said, I don't have time for this. I've got a date. They gave her a ticket and a summons, but let her go on her date. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, nothing, <laughs> nothing's going to come of that. Nobody cared about that at yeah. all. If she actually remembers to go to court, and she should, everybody's going to throw that out. They're, they're not going to show up to be witnesses against her. No. Right. She'll, be, she'll be just fine. Customer's a cheapskate, though. <laughs> Most of us, if we need a ride, we use Uber. You might call your wife, Danny, if you need a ride somewhere, but you'd use Lyft or Uber, maybe a taxi. Well, not in Tennessee. One man decided he needed a ride to the cafeteria, wanted to go to the cafeteria at a hospital because they've got great prices. And good food. Hospitals are well known for great food. No, wait, they're not. You've been to the hospital more recently than I. You should know. Well, he decided to fake a heart attack to get a free ride to the hospital cafeteria. Nice. (laughs) 
<laughs> he just really likes green jello, yep. apparently. Yep, yep. Believe it oh. or not, if you look behind you in that refrigerator right there, there's bright green jello that oh, I yeah. brought. Everybody likes green jello, yeah. Paul. Kenneth Couch has been arrested. Uh, they noticed when he got to the hospital, he just got out of the ambulance and walked to the cafeteria. And that's when they said, <laughs> didn't you say you're having a heart attack? He's like, nope, just need some green jello. Couch has been arrested. Burglary and falsely reporting an incident. Mm. Burglary? Uh, yeah, because they used an ambulance to go get him. So it's something about I don't, I don't know that that's the burglary. I think the burglary, burglary is a weird thing. Yeah. It's actually walking into somewhere with the intent of committing a crime. You've just burgled. You don't wow. have to actually have done anything. I think there are crimes that'll still have an umbrella of burglary, but uh, if you walk in and in your head, I'm gonna steal Paul's microphone, and for some reason you can't, I've still burgl- burgled at this place. I think I'm right about that. While eating bugles. No? Sure. All right. What do you want to eat during your crimes? <laughs> a monkey is suspected to have been stolen from a zoo Turned up uh, just a few hours later, thankfully. Was it jumping on the bed? Because I am sick of that. <laughs> no, it was at McDonald's. A monkey? <laughs> the Goldie's marmoset was stolen from the zoo. Is that a monkey? Yep. Oh, wow. They're cute. It is a super cute little kind of monkey. And the McDonald's, just a few blocks away, called authorities and said, there's a really cute monkey hanging out here. He's very friendly, very well behaved. But he's not supposed to be at McDonald's. Is he throwing poop? No. I don't know why those monkeys throw poop. He's in their play area on the monkey bars. Probably. Oh, as he calls them bars. Bars, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> News this morning is brought to you by Les Schwab. And if you couldn't tell by the sort of show we're delivering, it's Friday. Friday, I know what that means. Yeah, but I don't know what that means. It's the been kind a great of quality sh- show we're delivering. A fantastic one, fantastic that's what she's saying. Show. Yeah. Have you been listening? <laughs> It's time for the Friday Fun Fact! <laughs> Our Friday Fun Fact for today. Well, how about this? Tomorrow is International Bacon Day. International, International bacon, bacon Day? Heck yeah! And did yeah. you know the first bacon factory opened in 1770? A businessman named John Harris opened the first bacon processing plant in the county Wilshire. He developed a special brining solution called the Wiltshire Cure Method, and today is still a favorite of bacon lovers. Nice. How about another little factoid about bacon? Sure. We all know the term bringing home the bacon, right? You think that has something to do with bringing home the money. The money, right, sure. It does not. It has nothing to do with income. Back in 12th century England, churches would award a side of bacon to any married man who swore before God he and his wife had not argued for a year and a day. (laughs) <laughs> Men who brought home the bacon were seen as great citizens and great husbands. But uh, liars. Yeah. <laughs> tell me you're going to give me a slab of bacon. It, no matter what you want me to do, just tell me what it is you want me to do. Uh, if you prove to me that, or if you tell me that you've come from Mars this morning. So, it's so weird that you picked Mars because I just flew down. Do you know they have to put you to sleep cryogenically till you get here? Can I have my bacon, please? Yeah, here you go. Yeah, just lie. It's only the church. Hey, we've got some music news right around the corner. Some very uh, interesting news about the new Mission Impossible movie. And turns out uh, Luke Skywalker, Mark Hamill, is even cooler than we thought. Plus, we'll talk about the changes to the Seahawks. Derek will be telling us what movies we should and should not see in theaters. That all happens next. Starting with music news, the Grateful Dead documentary that was much talked about early in the summer is now headed to home theaters. A lot of people went to the movie theaters to see this, despite the fact it's four hours. Yeah. Long, strange trip from the Grateful Dead, produced by Martin Martin Scorsese, will now be released on Blu-ray and DVD and digital format so you can watch at home and take a much-needed bathroom break. Yeah, of course. Four hours. November 9th is when you'll be able to watch that. It's a lot of the Grateful Dead, yeah. to be honest with you. I don't even know if the mo- most hardcore fans, hi Dean, would even want to watch four hours. Yeah, although, uh, you know, a, a normal Bruce Springsteen concert is longer than that. Hi Dean. 
Dean is one of our on he's a, one of our long term <laughs> listeners. Oh. Uh, who and he's a big deadhead. Huge deadhead. Every time we talk about the Grateful Dead, he emails me. But he's come out to all of our Christmas shows and all that. He he's a big KZOK supporter. Uh, probably the biggest deadhead I know in the Seattle area. Uh, growing up, I knew a lot of deadheads. I have never been to a Grateful Dead show. Well, you could go to Dead and Company now. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I went to, I'm with you, man. I went to go to a Grateful Dead show in Philadelphia in 1998 or something like that when I first lived there, or second time I lived there. And, uh, man, I got to this really cool rock and roll chick with a big giant balloon full of nitrous oxide, and everything a little blurry after that, but I had a great time, but I did not see a show. But you stayed in the parking lot yeah. the whole time. Which lots of people do. Yeah. Thousands of people sure. do. Alan Parsons has confirmed his first studio album in 15 years with the working title, The Secret. Is that the same Alan Parsons that has a project? Yes. All right. Now, the he said the writing and recording sessions are going very well. They said, well, what's it about? And he said, it's a secret. Yeah, he's right. <laughs> it's called... The secret. It's not going to sell well if you try and keep it a secret forever. No, you want to break out that secret. Exact, you're exactly right about that. There's a story making news about a young boy named Aiden Vasquez. He is 10 years old and had been bullied at school, wound up in the hospital after students punched him in the face and called him names and stole his backpack. Big black eye and things like that, this kid. Yeah, I he saw was, him on the news. He was in bad shape and... Yeah, he, he stood up to bullies or some such thing, and he said to his mom, that, like, they made this whole thing that it, this was wrong, and he stood up to bullies, bullies that were being mean to a friend of his, I believe, right? Well, he said he refused to fight back. They stole his backpack. They called him names. And I said, uh, I refuse to fight back because that's not the Jedi way. Right. Well, He's wrong, of course, but all right. Yeah, because isn't the Jedi way to take a like a lightsaber and sword chop a guy's and hand off? Cut their hand off, yeah. Well, Mark Hamill heard about this story, saw it on social media, and she had posted the story to express her outrage at the school for not doing enough to protect kids from bullying. Well, Mark Hamill saw this and tweeted a shout out. Shout out to Aiden Vasquez for his courage and wid- wisdom in the face of adversity. I'm so proud of you for showing that you can be a Jedi in real life. Congratulations, always, your fan, Mark Hamill. Oh, I did not know any of that. I think I had the wrong story in mind when I was saying about all this and bullies and so like all the word bu- bully was used. Certainly. Yep. Well, good on Mark Hamill then. Nice story, right? I mean, it's bad that the kid got bullied and needed stitches to clean <laughs> up his face. Yeah. But- yeah, but welcome to being a boy. You get punched in the face every now and again. That's true. You did. It's true. It's like if you say, you're a terrible person. How could you? No, no, no. I don't know any boys that have never been punched in the face. Everybody yeah. gets punched in the face once or twice. We've been talking a lot about the mission. Oh, not Mission Impossible. Um, wow, I can't believe I said Mission Impossible because I'm thinking of Tom Cruise. Top Gun. The Top Gun sequel. We've been talking about it because we're excited about it. Much talked about because people have been anticipating and waiting for it. We have also talked about Val Kilmer and what kind of shape is he in? Yeah, to, I worry about that guy. Me too. To return. Now, Tori saw him. Tori, do you remember how long ago it was you went to see, uh, hear him speak? About a year ago. And he was dead then, right? Oh, he wasn't dead, but he just couldn't talk very well. He couldn't he speak. He went to give a speech and couldn't speak? Yeah. No, he was drooling and he had like a napkin. Oh, poor oh, baby. Yeah. Oh, man. But I still love him. He still was in good spirits. We all love him. Well, Tori, this is good news for you. He has reportedly undergone treatment for throat cancer, which was why he was having those issues that Tori talked about. And didn't he get that from a bad girl? We don't know the source of his cancer. Does they... he say he got it from a bad girl? No, he Does Michael pretends Douglas... he doesn't have it. Does Michael Douglas say he got it yes. from a bad girl? Somebody said, I know this story. Somebody says he's a bad Michael girl. Michael Douglas has a particular type of throat cancer that is caused by, uh, I think it's HPV. But not in the case of Al Kilmer. He has denied having any issues at all. However... He denies cancer? Straight up normal cancer? He pretends he didn't. He denied it uh, to the media. He said, I do not have cancer. I don't know why Michael Douglas says I have cancer. Leave me alone. Okay. We all know he had throat cancer. But Val Kilmer has been spotted. Pictures have been taken of him and his daughter in Los Angeles, and he looks great. Really? Great. How's she look? She's hot. She's 26 years old. She's his daughter with oh God, actress Joanne Wally. Yeah. And they said he's doing really, really well. And 
that he appears to be back to Val Kilmer as opposed to the drooling Val Kilmer. The drooling Val Kilmer. That's wild that he could made it that much. Like, his cancer isn't that friendly with you. Oh, right, you know, yeah. you just promise people you'll be better and then you will. Cancer has a tendency <laughs> to kill you. Emmy Rossum, the actress, has announced that she is leaving the show Shameless after nine seasons. It's wow. a very popular Showtime series. She says it will likely go on without her. She expects it to go on without her. I expect it to go on without her because I like that show and I don't know who she is. Uh, big brown eyes and brown curly hair. Very pretty, but huge big eyes. That's William H. Macy, right? I've never seen it. That's the star of the show. Is William yeah, he H. is. Yeah. yeah, he's the dad. The show, unless he leaves, it will go on. Yeah. I don't, don't flatter yourself, young lady. You know, I'm not going to be, I, I, I can't do this show anymore. I'm sure you're all going to cancel. Except William H. Macy's in the show and I'm fine. Does she play his daughter, Paul? Have you watched it? Uh, I don't know the actress, but uh, I'm guessing that she's the eldest daughter who's mm-hmm. also a big player in the show. But I only watched the first season and haven't, haven't gotcha. caught up since. Let's take a look at sports. 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 Sports brought to you by Bradley Johnson Attorneys. If you're facing a DUI, call 1-800-DUI-OA. That's 1-800-DUI-OA. Big win for the Mariners over the Athletics yesterday, 7-1. to one. They will continue their winning ways today. Huge series continuing against the Oakland A's. First pitch, 7-5 of on Root Sports. Mike Leake versus Mike Fires. Now, some teams have had years and years of poor attendance. One of those teams is the Florida Marlins. Yeah. It's the they, first ones I thought, in fact, they're the only ones I thought of. So bad. Well, they have announced some big plans for next season, including... Winning. You know, even when they're winning, their attendance is down. People just don't seem to care in Miami. World Series. Comunidad 305. The community from the 305 area code? It's a vibrant support section, which is an area in right field where fans will be encouraged to bring musical instruments and flags to oh, celebrate. They're, they're going to turn it into a soccer, soccer game. game. Yes. Right. Yeah. They wow. are hoping to turn it into a soccer game. They said, we saw this at uh, MLS games. We've seen it at EPL games, the World Baseball Classic. We want people to bring instruments. doesn't have to be a Vuvuzela. It can be anything and just party. And tickets are going to be dirt cheap. All right. I hope it's not a Vuvuzela because I wouldn't go. Those things are annoying, but they're, you know, they're going to bring in banjos and tambourines and stuff like that. Remember Drums. We, went, we went and saw a soccer game in Philadelphia and that there was a whole section of just fans with musical instruments, which sounds great, but they also had booze. And I was also in Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah. It was all trouble, man. But also, I mean, it's great. Awesome atmosphere at the Sounders games yeah. and they have the ECS section, which is the same thing. But if the rest of the stadium were empty, it'd be super weird. That's true. You know, if there's nobody else there enjoying your party, then I don't know. Uh, it would be really weird to just be partying in that one section of the of the baseball. Yeah, you gotta start park. somewhere. Yeah, I guess so. And the Seahawks mm, lost yeah last night, thirty to nineteen, finishing their preseason season zero oh, and four. Oof. That's outrageous, man. Yeah. Oakland finishes the preseason three and one. We will face them during regular season, but the um, we did see backup quarterbacks. We did see you know some highlights, but what some of you may have not seen, depending on what time you turn the game on, Marshawn Lynch, who of course is playing for Oakland now, right. made the rounds saying hello to all of his former Seattle teammates and staff during pregame warmups. He uh, went over to the general manager, John Schneider, and jokingly put a wrestling move on him. <laughs> they were all kidding around until he got to Pete Carroll, where he kind of gave him a nod and kept walking. <laughs> really? Oh. Yeah. So is there a thing there? Because everybody seems so affable about this. See, uh, I'm not. He's the enemy immediately. That day, although I told you this early on, I did. I'd, I had gotten over any affection I had for Marshawn Lynch, and it was before he was traded. Uh, it was when he was openly a jerk to a bunch of kids right in front of me, and I was done with the guy. Well, like many fans, I don't think uh, Marshawn Lynch got over the not getting the ball handed to him in that Super Bowl, and he's been vocal about it. I think that was part of the the reason that the team was okay with you know him moving on is that he was vocal about that in the locker room and yep. in the following seasons yeah and you problem. know there's the the theory that if he is on his last legs pardon me yeah uh, because it, it, it's been a tough career on that guy and it looks it when he's not moving in a game and he moves like a gazelle but outside the game it's a limp it's a hunch over thing seahawks regular season begins against the broncos sunday september 9th with a 125 kickoff 125 all right. kickoff 
College football starts tomorrow. UW plays Auburn and WSU Wyoming, both at 12.30. The Sounders have a big match tomorrow, 1 o'clock, against Sporting Kansas City. Tonight, the Storm play Game 3 versus the Phoenix Mercury with a 7 o'clock tip-off. 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 And sports brought to you by Bradley Johnson Attorneys. If you're facing a DUI, call 1-800-DUI-AWAY. Go it's chips. Friday. I know what I that, that means. means. New movies in theaters. Nothing really massive opening up. It is expected that uh, Crazy Rich Asians will still be the dominant player. Unbelievable to Again? me. I mean, you guys should go see it. It's not much. There's nothing to it, really. Well, here are the other movies you could go see. Operation Finale, starring Ben Kingsley. Yeah, I don't get it. 15 years after the end of World War II, acting on irrefutable evidence, a top-secret team of Israeli agents travel to Argentina, where Eichmann has been hiding with his family under an alias, and there is an attempt to try to get him into custody. Yeah, it's all troublesome to me, because there's a theory... And it's a true theory that a bunch of Nazis went to Brazil, you know, as the war was ending and they saw it was going to happen. Argentina. Uh, Argentina. Uh, they, they, uh, and Brazil, but yes, Argentina. Um, they went to, uh, they scattered out and they went there. Here's what I don't get right off the bat because it looks good and I love Ben Kingsley. Eichmann must have been 40 years younger than uh, Kingsley. They're just doing this weird makeup thing mm. to make him look younger and no wrinkles. So why not hire a different guy? Why yeah. hire an 80-year-old or whatever he is now to play a 40-year-old? Because we love Ben Kingsley. Uh, I think that, I think the makeup is going to be too distracting. Well, let's find out what the reviewers think. Operation Finale, Derek, what does Rotten Tomatoes say? We hope there's more to come. 61% fresh. All right. Mm-hmm. We've got a movie opening up called Kin, which stars Dennis Quaid, Zoe Kravitz, and James Franco. PG-13 action sci-fi. A crime thriller with a sci-fi twist, an unexpected hero destined for greatness, a vengeful criminal played by James Franco. And this movie um, looks super interesting, but like I said, crime with a sci-fi twist will not be for everyone. Ken, what are the reviewers saying? It's the black sheep of the family, 32% right. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Searching. Stars Deborah Messing and John Cho, a PG-13 thriller. John Cho's 16-year-old daughter goes missing. Mm. An investigation is opened. A detective is assigned to the case, but they don't have any leads. And that's when they turn to her laptop. This has a lot of technology in this film. They're trying to figure out where her digital footprints will lead them. What do their viewers say about searching? You'll be searching for the best seat in the theater, 91% wow. fresh. Holy moly. You know what I like about that movie? Because not much. The lead man that plays the dad all through it, he's the star of that movie, is Sulu, I believe, from the Star Trek movies. And John most Cho. of the, most of those guys go on to do not a bunch. Yeah. And he's jumped to another lead in a movie. And he's an Asian American. He's got to deal with all of that. You know, getting the lead in a movie is like when this Crazy Rich Asians came out, they talked about that. What was the last time you saw a lead Asian? Went, oh, yeah, he's got a point. So good on that guy. We've got Little Stranger opening up, starring Domhnall Gleeson and Ruth Wilson. This is a rated R movie that tells the story of the son of a housemaid building a life as a country doctor. It's the year 1948, and he finds out all is not as it seems in this sleepy little town. What are the reviewers saying about the little stranger? No stranger danger here. 63% fresh. All right. All right. There you go. And another movie opening up wow. is Keanu Reeves and Winona Ryder. Mm. The comedy romance rated R, Destination Wedding. Oh, it looks cute. Well, Keanu Reeves and Winona Ryder have made movies together. Everyone says they have amazing chemistry, but the movie looks pretty meh. They go on a destination wedding. They fight. They don't get along. They make fun of all the other guests. What are the reviewers saying about Destination Wedding, Derek? This wedding needs a shotgun. 36% rock. Oh. <laughs> Told you. When I say it's... All the trailers are up but right you say now. to everything. I don't say to everything, Paul. I say <laughs> to you. All, right. All the trailers are up right now. KZOK.com. <laughs> Plus, Dang. Derek is going to tell you how to win movie tickets for Ooh. free right now. That's yeah. right. If you want to win free movie tickets, you're in luck to, because today is free movie Friday. Free, free movie, movie Friday. Friday. Go to Woo! Adam. Take it.
Sports app lets you browse movie titles, buy tickets, invite friends, pre-order concessions, all from your phone, and skip the lines. Today, Adam Tickets wants to give you a chance at free movie tickets. Text to them right now. Text WIND, that's W-I-N-D, to Adam1, that's 28661 for your chance to win. Standard data and text message rates may apply. All right. Like I said, all of those movie trailers are up at KZOK.com. Thank you, Derek. Thank you, Derek, Thanks, for Derek. that. Uh, thank you, Paul. You're welcome. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> thank you, Danny. Thanks, Danny. Thanks, Tori. Thanks, Thanks Dean. Tori. <laughs> Did you say thanks, Dean? Yeah, thanks, Dean. Yeah. <laughs> and thanks to all of you who listened to this show today. It was today. a great show today. It was a great show today. Yeah. All right. Bye. That's it? You're, leave, you're leaving right now? I am. Do you I, want, I, I, have I, something you want to do? You want to I say do. Thanks? I, want, I want to. No, oh, thanks, I, Steve Slayton. Thanks, yeah, Steve Slayton. that's exactly just, what I like to do. Except he's not here today. He's not? No. Who's oh, I thought today? he was. No, I think uh, Connie Cole is in today. Well, right. then I don't thanks, want to Connie thank Cole. Steve Slayton. I want to thank Connie Cole. You want to thank Steve for giving you Connie Cole today. I, I don't, because you know what I want to <laughs> thank uh, Steve Slayton for? What? Not being here so I can gaze at him up and down Aww. in his radio genius <laughs> yeah. self and teach me a lesson just in osmosis. Oh, yeah, that's what I wanted to say. I believe Connie <laughs> Cole is coming up next. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll see you when we get back. Bye. Bye.